back to Ranger Stadium for the Comal Bowl between Smithson Valley and Canyon. The Rangers come in winless on the season still at 0-3. Meanwhile, the Cougars an even record of two wins and two losses, although Canyon does uh, have a two-game losing streak coming into the game tonight. Tony, welcome back inside Ranger Stadium. Smithson Valley again lost the 26-60 opener last week against Clemens, but one of the positives I thought from the game was the running by sophomore Darlington Frash against Clemens. Ten carries, a season high 86 yards. Smithson Valley is going to need to establish some kind of running game if they want to have, uh, have success the rest of the season. Indeed, and they've got two guys who have run the ball the majority of the times. I just think it's they're going to have to find a way to get them in a good spot. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we've relied on Levi too much making plays. Uh, somebody else has to help him out. The offensive line has done a good job at times, but not consistently, and I think that's more than anything Coach Hill is looking for consistency. Again, Smith and Manley, Candy in a critical 26-6A matchup in the Comal Bowl Ranger Stadium. Kickoff coming up shortly. Back with more Smith and Manley football on the Rangers Network. Chicken Express is the place for legendary chicken tenders, the freshest sides, and the best sweet tea in Texas, Chicken E Sweet Tea. Let's give a big thank you to the Brown family for supporting all the high schools in the area for over a decade. Dine in, drive up, or drive through. We'll see you at Chicken Express. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Comal ISD. The Comal Independent School District is a fast-growing and innovative district with more than 23,000 students. Families are attracted to Comal ISD because of its family values, neighborhood schools, and safe environments. Come to Comal ISD and Chicken Express, home of world-famous chicken tenders and legendary chickeny sweet tea. Dine in, drive up, or drive through. We'll see you at Chicken Express. And Physicians Premier. Our conveniently located, freestanding ERs are fully equipped and expertly staffed so you get the best care closest to home. At Physicians Premier, you'll find faster service, friendly doctors, and a comfortable level like no other. And Texas Regional Bank. Buying or building a home? We have construction and mortgage loans to help. For all your personal or business banking needs, Texas Regional Bank, the people you know. And Texas 46, a homestyle hill country restaurant, has been in the Spring Branch community for over 30 years where the focus is on a Lone Star favorite, slow cooked barbecue. We can cater or host your next large event too. Welcome to Texas 46. It is the Comal Bowl on a Friday night at Ranger Stadium on the Rangers Network. Brent Freeman alongside Tony Brubaker and about ready for this one to begin. The Cougars won the coin toss and they have elected to receive. So we'll see that rushing attack led by Nate Colbert on the football field to start things off. The quarterback Xavier Perez is obviously a weapon as well. We talked about not having the two running backs, but I don't know that that might mean Perez becomes more of a runner and more of a danger on the defense on the offensive side versus our defense. Now Perez last week in the loss against the Brothels did throw for a season high 205 yards and a touchdown at a 33-19 defeat in the worst bowl. Cougars trying to avoid a three-game losing streak. The Rangers trying to stop a three-game slide of their own. Keep an eye on Calvin Farr back deep for Canyon. Return to kickoff back 80 yards for a touchdown last week against the Braunfels. Off the foot of Mason Reed, this game is underway. And a deep kickoff to start things off into the end zone of the Cougars start at their own 25. And a look again at three-year starter at quarterback Xavier Perez, a senior for Canyon. Challenge for the defense, obviously, is to keep him contained early, not allowing him to be a difference maker here in the first quarter. And again, 
No set hate tonight for Canyon. Broken collarbone against the Brothels last week as Perez worked out of the pistol on first down. It is a play action pass over the top, incomplete for the Cougars. Will bring up second down and 10. Intended for far. Jalen Nutt on coverage, kind of bracketed him with one of the safeties. They don't throw the ball often, but when they do, it is far one of the, the leading receivers. When you and I saw the Cougars a couple of weeks ago defeat Georgetown Eastview, we saw Perez wear the number one. He's wearing the number 10 tonight. <laughs> On second down and 10 from the 25. Perez going to work, keeps it himself, and he is going to pay for it. The Rangers stack him up right around the 26. They're going to hold the senior quarterback to a yard there to bring up third down and nine. Some confusion on the play. I think he turned the wrong way. Colbreth came past him looking for the ball, but Perez had turned to his right. Colbreth was on his left. This is a down and distance you want if you're Smith Valley's defense or one oriented offense having to go third and long to convert. It's going to be tough for Canyon. On third and nine, Perez out of the shotgun. The Rangers bring a four man rush. Pass is complete but shorter first down yardage. Catch was made by Jacob Garcia, team leading 17 catch of the year. It brings up fourth down. We've seen them run that play a lot. We saw it uh, when we were over at Canyon a couple of weeks ago. Just a little quick out with the inside receiver as the outside receiver runs down the field. Um, if not for, if, if there's a missed tackle, he's got a first down. You have to imagine getting a three and out for the Rangers defense is a lot for their confidence. Yes, yeah, without a doubt. Ethan Sill back to return this punt from Jalen Vasquez. It's a high punt. Sill will call for the fair catch, she'll make it. It actually wasn't Vasquez there, the punter. For Canyon, it was Aaron Platt. Vasquez struggled kicking the football this year for the Cougars, both as a punter and as a place kicker. And there we see the punt by Platt, received by Sill. The Rangers start at across their own 30-yard line. The first offensive possession of the game coming up, 48 seconds in and no score. And now the question is, can the Rangers get a running game together? With Franco and Frash, the two main ball carriers, let's see if one of them can break off some runs. Well, we see Frash get the first rep here on the Rangers' first offensive play. It is a run for Frash. Makes one man miss the backfield, and it takes a crew of Cougars to finally send him out of bounds across the 45, the 48-yard line. 13-yard got up there for the sophomore. Nose tackle Kyle Collier was in the backfield, and Brent, he had him. Frash got away and ended up getting a big game because the first guy didn't wrap up. The senior quarterback for the Rangers, Levi Williams, making his 16th career start at Smith Valley, coming off a rough game at Clemens, 7 for 25, passing only 81 yards of total offense for Williams. Off first down for the 48, it is a throw for Williams and a catch made by Sill. How about Ethan Sill playing receiver for the Rangers on that first down play? Good for another Ranger first down. I think one of the things coaches do when they start having issues is some of your better players play more times. Mm -hmm. Ethan Sill, a defensive back, now at wide receiver because you're looking for someone who can make plays. Well, we saw Mason Pierce and Trevon Merrick would do the same, so why not with Ethan Sill, right? Exactly. So, fresh set of downs for the Rangers inside of Canyon Territory. One minute gone by and no score. Three wide for Williams on first down. Still again lined up at receiver, wide to the left. A pass to the right, caught by a wide open Kuykendall. Chopped down short of the Canyon 35 with the 36 yard line. First catch tonight for Nick Kuykendall. It's good for seven. Canyon's defense has given up some passing yards through the first couple of games. The Rangers trying to take advantage of that right now. And now we see Jeremiah Gilliam and Draylon Radabaugh checking out receiver here. On second down and three at the Canyon, 36. Radabaugh splits out wide to the right and two receivers wide left. For Tone in the backfield, it is a run for Frash and a sweep to his left, finds a crease. Drag down though, short of the first down, maybe the line of scrimmage, that's it for Frash. On the stop, Collier that time for Canyon, third down and three to go. Tough play because pursuit had come from the defensive right side. He had a long way to go to get around it and ended up losing a yard. Something tough now, third and four. Should be manageable, but you gotta have the right play. I wonder if this might be four down territory as well for Smithson Valley. 
Third down, four to go. The Rangers have to reach the Canyon 33 for a first down. For Tone, the motion man. Pass, caught, no, dropped by wide open Kuykendall. And it brings a fourth down. Well, the blocks downfield set up perfectly as well for Nick Kuykendall. If he makes that catch, at minimum, it's a first down. Yeah, great play call. It's, it's a first down. You just Some of the issues the Rangers have had this year is dropped passes. Well, I wondered if this was four-down territory. Tony Coach Hill yeah. confirms it. It's four-down territory. And here we go, fourth down and four at the Canyon 37. And the Cougars jump, but was there a timeout called first by Coach Lepsis? Yes, there was. For the Cougars, their first. They have two left. They had a, a late sub on the, end of the play, and I think that was part of the confusion. They weren't lined up where they wanted to be. Two guys had jumped off sides, which would have been a first down anyway, but coach got the timeout in time. Again, first-year head coach Joe Lepsis at Canyon, previously at Wiley East and Abilene over the previous eight years, won 51 games, helped build that program from the ground up. Football didn't exist prior. And the first varsity season back in 2010 did some great things there. A couple of years ago, guided Wiley East to the region semifinals. The Cougars got themselves a really good football coach. They did. They've been waiting for one for a while, too. And that's uh, certainly good news for Canyon High School. Big four down coming up with this game. Smithson Valley looking to do something they have yet to do this season, Tony. Play with the lead. Getting a score here would give the Rangers a chance to do that. They haven't had a lead very many minutes of this year. Zero. Zero. They did not lead That's against Northern Lee, <laughs> did not lead against Madison, did not lead against Clemens last week. But in all football games, Tony, every or all three games rather, did come down to not only the fourth quarter, but really the final possession of the game. That's correct. And we'll see if those close game situations will pay off for the Rangers moving forward. <laughs> And you see the Cougars stack of the box a bit here on fourth and four and four wide for Williams. And again, Darlington Frash, the sophomore tailback, the lone setback in the backfield with Williams. Senior looking to convert here for Smithson Valley. He'll face a blitz. Williams steps up against the pressure, throws, and it's incomplete. Rangers were looking for the tight end on the play. Austin Howell, good play, though, by Facundo, the safety to break it up. And the Cougars get a turnover on down. Kind of a change of mentality. I, I'm shocked that Levi, once he got past that initial rush, doesn't keep going for the first down because mm -hmm. through the first three games, he's been that guy. So Smith Valley's defense came up with a three and out. First time they were out there, now back in the field now as the Cougars take over from their own 37. Senior quarterback Xavier Perez. His fourth play is a handoff to Cole Breath. The Rangers bury him with a 39, holding Cole Breath to get a two. Second down and eight. Yeah, the two running backs we saw a couple of weeks ago, Cole Breath was the one who shorter, more powerful. Haney was the one who seemed to have some big runs in the game that were difference-making runs. On second down and eight for Perez in the offense. It is a run for Cole Breath again into the teeth of the Ranger defense, and they send him back. A loss back at the 36-yard line. Great pursuit there. I believe it was Thomas Zoy getting the tackle for the Rangers. That'll set up third down and 10. Both Witcher and Moore were there as well. This was a team effort to plug that hole. And again, Canyon's offense not predicated around the pass. His face with third down and long, and Perez working with an empty backfield. Rangers showing a blitz. They're going to bring four. Perez on the rollout throws, and it's caught at the 45, maybe the 46. It's far the catch. Tackle by Colin Betsy, but short of the first down. On fourth down and one, what will the Cougars do here? And it looks like they're going to send out the punting unit. I think more than anything, Coach Lepsis would love to go for it, but wise coaching says don't take a chance right now. Now, you and I, we keep referencing the game that we saw a couple of weeks ago against Georgetown Eastview and the Patriots. We saw the Cougars try to execute a fake punt. Didn't really work out. This is a punt and not a good one. Angle to the near side, sails out of bounds. And where will they mark it? Out at the Ranger 36. That is an 18-yard punt there for Aaron Blatt. Kind of surprised they left it there because the ball 
ended up about five, six, seven yards out of bounds. Uh, but the 36 is where they'll spot it. You know how a game is dominated 35. by defense? Yeah. Is that there's only three minutes and 30 seconds off the clock, and this is already your fourth possession of the game. <laughs> two for Canyon, and now two for Smithson Valley with no score. With well, a game that we saw against Georgetown Eastview, neither team could be stopped. Right, that is correct. First down, Rangers at the 35. Coming off the turnover on downs, it is a flip to the freshman, Casey to Wells, getting a block downfield from his quarterback, Williams. Wells takes off inside of midfield, marked out at the Canyon 42-yard line. What a play, gain of 23. Two really fun things on that play. The block by Levi, it was fun just seeing that happen. But Wells showed the kind of speed the freshman has getting down the field quickly against pursuit. And Tony, not only was that a great block by Williams, I think that was a pancake. You know, you don't see quarterbacks factor into the pancake stat very often. On first down for the Canyon 42. And what could be a must-win game for both teams. Frash on first down is swallowed up for a loss. Back at the 46-yard line, Owen Worley. The inside linebacker, the tackle there for Canyon will bring up second down and 14. Boy, did Worley just shoot the gap there, and Frash was looking for a hole, and all of a sudden he had someone grabbing his leg. A big loss on first down for the Rangers. Worley, a player move from running back to linebacker with a coaching change, and is the team's third leading tackler coming into the game tonight. On second and 14, a swing pass for Frash, and he dropped it. Incomplete will bring up third down, 14. Drops an issue for the Rangers in the first quarter. That's just, it's so frustrating, I know, as a coach when you have a play that's got a chance to give you, you know, make up some of the loss and maybe yeah. get a couple of more, and you don't hang on to a pass that was more than catchable. So we see Ethan Sill check back in at receiver here. Sill had a big catch in the Rangers' first play of the game. And I believe we're seeing his first snaps at a receiver this season. Play clock winding down on third down and 14 for the Canyon 46. Senior quarterback Williams back to throw off the play fake. Great protection for Williams. Now flushed out. Williams throws on the run. A dart caught by the tight end. Inside the 20 yard line is Howell. What a strike there from Levi Williams and a Ranger first down. And we've seen Levi look for Austin Howell several times tonight already. That was a great catch by Howell, even though he only had one coming in. We know he's been a target. That's a big play. Howell made that first catch last week against Clemens. Subs here for the Rangers as we see Jacob Fortone. We have a flag. Garrett Brooks check into the game, and now, yes, there is a penalty marker on the far sideline. Illegal touching. Did Howell go out of bounds? Yeah, must have been. Must have. So wipe out the conversion, and it goes from a Smithson Valley first down to now third down and a long way to go back behind midfield. Ball placed back into Smithson Valley 49. So this will make it about third down and 20. I wonder here, Tony, if you look for Howell again. Need to get it to someone who can make some plays once he catches the ball. Third and 19 officially. Canyon going to drop eight in coverage. Williams takes off to run at the 40 and down to the 36. Good run there, but He'll be short of the first down, a pickup of 15 yards. Now fourth down and four. And and do you go for it again? I would. I think, Tony, that's why you called the quarterback draw there to, because you're treating this as if it is four down territory again. Great run by Levi. He saw a seam and just took off, kind of like we thought he would that last time when he threw the ball on fourth down. Here we go. The Cougars already won fourth down stop of this game, which is not even five, but it's old. Fortone, the only a little confusion among the receivers. Set back in the backfield. Play clock winding down. Williams looking left. Caught by Kuykendall. Good blocks. Cutting inside the 30. And stumbles four for the Ranger. First down at the 29. A pickup of seven and fourth and four. We'll move the sticks. 
Freshman Wells was the one who was lined up incorrectly to start with, got to the right spot. Then he gave one of the two key blocks on the play that gave Kuykendall a chance to get that first down. Approaching the halfway point of the first quarter, no score, defensive affair so far. Rangers, though, just outside the red zone at the Canyon, 29. Two minutes of the backfield this time for Williams. It is a, a delay run. No, it is a pass caught by Jeremiah Gilliam on another nice throw from Williams inside the 15 and down to the 13-yard line for a pickup of 16 yards. You know, we said it last week, Levi wasn't real sharp. Tonight, he's sharp. Through the first three games of the season, Williams only completing 34% of his passes. Only one touchdown thrown so far this year, but no interceptions. First down for the Canyon, 13 for the senior quarterback. And on first down, Williams calls his own number, slips one tackle in the backfield, and finally dragged down at the 11. That's good for two, second down and eight. I think it was Holt who grabbed him and wouldn't let him go, and Levi had a chance to turn in the corner there at the last minute, maybe to get a few more yards. Canyon's defense last week did an admirable job stopping New Braunfels' run. The Unicorns only 82 yards rushing last week, but through the air, the Unicorns nearly 300 yards against Canyon's defense. But that's all New Braunfels wants to do is throw the ball. Right. That's one of the reasons why they get so many yards. They throw so many passes. On second down at eight from the Canyon 11. Here's motion from Fortone. Takes a handoff on the sweep to his left. Inside the five, has a quarter in the end zone, and the Rangers have their first lead of 2018, 6-0. Great downfield blocking again, Brand. Our receivers are really picking up the pace, giving our running backs, and I think that was Wells again who got the last block in before Fortone took it in. After the PAT is Mason Reed, looking for an even 7-0 lead. Snap set down, kick by Reed is up, and the Rangers have that 7-0 lead. Five minutes to go, first quarter, Smith Valley 7, Canyon nothing in the Comal Bowl. This is Smith Valley football on the Rangers Network. Let's go, hurry up, get the play in. Okay, here we go. Left retainer, headgear, no popcorn, straight teeth. Headgear? Straight teeth? Yeah. Yeah. Good call. What's going on here? I thought I left you in charge. It was a good call. It was a great call. It was a really good, good call. call. Okay. Run the play. Your life is full of journeys. You're always on the go, dealing with ever-changing challenges. And there's a place where you always feel welcome and safe, a place you call home. But you can't be everywhere at once, or can you? Honeywell Total Connect keeps you connected to your home no matter where you are. Receive push notifications on your iOS device every time motion is captured or someone presses your SkyBell video doorbell. You can now see, hear, and speak to your visitors all through the Honeywell Total Connect iOS app. Hello, Becky. Hi, Aunt Susan, I'm here. Sure, I'll open the door for you. You can use your smartphone to disarm the security system and unlock the door for your guests while seeing, hearing, and speaking to your visitor all from one app on a single screen. Honeywell Total Connect helps to increase your home security, keeping you comfortable and always in control. Now you can focus on what truly matters. Enjoy the convenience you've never had before. Honeywell Total Connect grants you peace of mind so you'll never miss anything ever again. Picture the possibilities. Inside Ranger Stadium for the Comal Bowl. Smith Valley on top. Seven to zip. Seven minutes gone by. First quarter and the kickoff by Mason Reed again. Sales eight yards deep in the end zone. The Cougars start at their own 25 yard line. The drive there for the Rangers. Seven play, 65 yards in three minutes and 30 seconds, ending on an 11 yard touchdown run by Jacob Fortone. 
his first touchdown this season. You know, it's fun to say Mason Reed kicks off again, especially when he's kicking it through the end zone, but that means good things are happening. And the Cougars so far, two possessions offensively, only six plays, two three outs. It is a run on first down up the middle, 35-yard line, wow. and more cold breath into the open field of the Ranger 30-yard line. Inside the 20, one man to beat, caught from behind, down at the 12-yard line. Jalen Nutt finally caught up with him. Big run there from Nate Colbreth. 63 yards on that run. He looked like a horse, man. He was moving. A lot of what we saw in that game a couple of weeks ago against Georgetown Eastview, Xavier Perez on the first down play at the 12, lunging forward to the 10 for a couple to bring up second down at eight. Colbreth this season, three touchdown runs of over 30 yards. That night against the Patriots, we saw Colbreth run for 284 yards. His teammate Seth Haney ran for a buck 99 that same night. Will Gibbons, a great stop there, grabbing his leg as he got upfield. Just a two yard gain. Second and eight, eight minutes gone by in the first, seven nothing the Ranger lead, but the Cougars are threatening. Run for Colbreth is blown up by Witcher. Trey Witcher. Shot right through the offensive line to make the play, drag down cold breath for a loss, back to the 12, and now third down and 10. Great defensive line work again. Gibbons the play before, this time Witcher, those defensive tackles, it's running game. Now the Cougars have no kicking game this year. They've not attempted a field goal this season. This likely four down territory. Perez empty backfield on third down and 10. Running it himself, looking for a hole. Escapes to the corner, inside the five, and he's in. Touchdown, Canyon, Xavier Perez. 11th career rushing score for the third year starter, the senior Xavier Perez, and Canyon responds quickly to the Ranger touchdown. He just outran the defense, who got some penetration up the middle, but he got enough blocking on the corner to get take it in. PAT is not attempted with the holder pick of the football and now on the run for the Cougars is Payne McKay and forced out at the four yard line. Well you saw Aaron Platt approach the football and swipe his leg at it but McKay picked it up and the Rangers maintain their 7-6 lead. 3.26 to go in the opening quarter. This is Smith Valley football on the Rangers network. Okay, take a look here. You know, these pearly whites, uh, they're just not right. So you got this guy here, and, and, and boom, you move it over here. And don't forget this guy here. You shove it over here. After Ferris Orthodontics get a hold of these teeth, bam! It's like it's like magic for your teeth. So the thing is, when teeth are lined up, you, you know, you, you get a good smile. And it was Ferris Orthodontics that did that right there. Sunday, September 23rd. Don't miss the 911 two night premiere event. It must be hard being a first responder. And if you missed a heart pounding second of 911 season one, we have to get it to the hospital. Watch it anytime on demand at Fox Now. The only way to survive the job is to find a way to cope with the ones you lose. But when you actually save someone, there is no better feeling in the world. I am going to get you out of here, I swear on my life. 911, the two night premiere event starts Sunday, September 23rd on Fox. And welcome back to Ranger Stadium again for the Comal Bowl. 7-6, the Ranger will lead. Smithson Valley, earlier in the quarter, had a nice drive, seven play, 65 yards, very methodical. But the Cougars answer with an explosive drive of their own, marching 75 yards in just four plays, highlighted by the 63-yard run from Nate Colbreth on the first play of the drive. You know, the really good news is you're, you've held the lead for a minute 34 in the game. Even though you gave up a touchdown, you still have the lead because they can't kick extra points. So far this season, kicking the ball on PAT, the Cougars 6-4-11. So they have elected to go for two in a lot of situations this year. And again, no field goals made or attempted, attempted. by Canyon this season. And so a kickoff and onside does not catch the Rangers by surprise. Heads up play made by Alfonso Valdez to jump right on it at midfield. And, you know, Tony, the Cougars, they come back into the game off the big running play, the touchdown scored by Xavier Perez. But because of special teams, 
it's not a tie game, and now the Rangers have great field position leading 7-6. to six. Well, thank goodness Valdez has good hands because that ball hit him right in the chest. A line drive, kind of a squib kick, and it hit, hit him, and he held on to it and went down right away. Good field position. You're right for the Rangers. Now, Binks, Mr. Valley, offensive line joining Levi Williams out there, Logan Smith, Merrick Everett, Devin Smith, Taylor Brooks, and Ronald Coltney out there on the old line. Our first down, a catch is made inside the 40-yard line and down to the 38. It's Ethan Sill, another catch for the Rangers, and another Smith Valley first down. Something we haven't seen a lot of this year. Sill got hit and carried the defender another five yards just by being tough. I mentioned Coveney playing right tackle for Smithson Valley, their biggest body on the offensive line. 6'5", 280 pounds, is committed to play college football at Texas State. Good for him. You look at the left tackle, too, by the way. Logan yeah. Smith, only a junior, looks pretty big himself. 6'4", 245. Needs to add 30 pounds or so at least. On first down for the 38. Williams has to for Tone. On another sweep for Tone score to the previous drive of the Rangers. And here, picks up good chunk of yardage down to the 33. Gain of five, staying ahead of the chains. Second down, five to go. Good first down plays are always a coach's and a quarterback's best friend because you're not behind the chains, you're in front of them. And a second and five is certainly more favorable than some of the second downs we've seen. So we have seen runs tonight by Fortone, by Frash, by the quarterback Williams, but I have not seen Mark Franco out there at all tonight. That is correct. Nor have we seen Chris Rivera at receiver. On second and five, Williams on the run himself, sifting through the Canyon defense and backs his way to the Cougar 28. Five more yards, then a Ranger first down. And credit uh, sophomore fullback Garrett Brooks, who was in at fullback on that play, and he led Williams into the hole and sealed the linebacker. I think it was Worley on that play to give Williams a chance to get the first down. And now we see Brooks check out of the game, checking back in the freshman Kaysen Wells for Smithson Valley. Impressive-looking young player playing wide receiver. By the way, Franco's in uniform right by the coaches. Off first down for the Canyon 27. Williams throws on target to Kuykendall, but dropped it again wow. at the 25-yard line. The seniors' second drop tonight, second to 10. Third drop by the team. Yeah. That's, you don't want that to come back and bite you. Nothing against Canyon, but against the Cougars, maybe you can get away with those mistakes. But when you have teams like Judson and yeah. Steele and an improving East Central team awaiting at the schedule, yeah. you can't afford these kind of miscues. That is correct. Sometimes you can't even afford it against anybody. Sure. Every game in 26-6A feels like a playoff game, and this one looms large. The loser falls to 0-2, a lot of ground to make up. Without hitting the really play toughest clock. part of the schedule is, yes, the play clock winding down, and Coach Hill burns his first time out of the half. So looking at this rivalry, this is the 30th all-time meeting between these two, and the Rangers are 18 and 11 all-time against Canyon. Their most wins against any single opponent. The series dates back to 1980. Smithson Valley has not lost a Canyon in 23 years. Last loss, 1995. They've won 15 straight over the Cougars. 15 in a row. That's hard to do against it is. anybody. Yep. Last year was a tight one at 14 to nine to keep that string going. A game that came down to the final possession. The Cougars had goal to go inside the five and could not quite punch it in. And that was a Smith Valley team that was coming off a tight loss against Clemens, but the following week after struggling against Canyon, they go to Converse and beat Judson yeah. in overtime. Yeah. Go figure, right? <laughs> exactly. Minute 33 left, first quarter. Rangers on top by a point. Touchdowns in the game scored by Jacob Fortone for Smithson Valley and Xavier Perez for Canyon, both 11 yards away. That tug of war momentum, it's a big play right here. Out of the timeout, second and 10. It is a run for Williams up the middle, bolts inside the 25 and dropped to the 24 yard line. Tackle made by Caden Holt, the sophomore nose guard for the Cougars. That'll set up third down and eight to go. Tough third down, you got to figure out is this a. We haven't run the ball efficiently, other than Williams, a couple of quarterback draws, but 
who's going to catch the ball and be able to get up the field. You've done a couple of wide receiver screen type plays. Now can you get it to somebody just in a rhythm, maybe going post or flag, and get a touchdown out of it? I still believe because it's four down territory, you can run here on third down if you want. Third and eight, we see Gilliam lined up wide to the left for the Rangers and three receivers wide to the right. Williams to throw. Now he'll take off to run. Finds a hole inside the 15-yard line and spun down at the 13. Picks up 12. Smith Valley moves the chains again. He took a couple of tough shots on that, but was that ever a good run? I think he was looking wide left for a possible pass, and I don't think the receiver was looking. And he decided just to go, and there was a seam. That's a big run. Maybe one of those RPO plays there for Smith Valley, the run pass option. Under 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Competitive game so far with Smith Valley clinging to a 7-6 lead. First half of the Canyon 12. It is a receiver sweep for the freshman Wells trying to turn the corner. Wow. Slips a tackle wow. inside the five and crawls into the end zone. <laughs> Touchdown, Smith Valley. How about the freshman, Kaysen Wells? On running plays in this game, we saw a great block from Wells earlier in the ball game, and there takes it himself and scores. And at the five-yard line, a defender jumped in front of him. He just planted his right foot and pushed off and went into the end zone with guys on top of him. Reed's PAT is up, and it is good. As Mr. Valley's lead increases to 14 to six with six seconds to go here in the first quarter. And you look at the district standings, by the way, as we approach the end of quarter number one, and this is the second week of 26-6A play. The four teams that won last week were Judson, Clemens, New Braunfels, and East Central. There was a game played last night at Unicorn Stadium, won by the Hornets. East Central on the road goes to New Braunfels and defeats the Unicorns 23-12. The East Central Hornets 4-1 this year and 2-0 in district play. And I'll tell you what, they can run the football. Their quarterback and a running back looked really good last night at New Braunfels. The Unicorns seem to be very one-dimensional, and I think that's what cost them in the end. And guess who Smith Valley plays next after the bye? East Central. East Central. No gimmies in this district. Two men back deep for the Cougars. I mentioned Calvin Farr, big re return a week ago, is not back there for the Cougars right now. It's Cole Breath along with Jacob Garcia. Not that Reed's giving anybody a chance right now anyway. Previous two kickoffs deep into the end, deep into the end zone. This one, likewise, a touchback for the Cougars. Last possession for Canyon. The Cougars win 75 yards for score, and trail here 14 to six with time for maybe one more play. Last touchdown drive, seven plays, 50 yards, a minute 26. Capped, of course, by the 10-yard run by Cason Wells. The freshman, Cason Wells. Perez on what should be the final play of the quarter from the 25. Hands off to Cole Breath, running left, finds a hole. Cole Breath is finally wrapped up at the 32. Seven yard gain, ends the first quarter. Entertaining start so far to the Cole Malbowl. The end of one, it's Smith Valley 14, Canyon six. This is Smith Valley football on the Rangers Network. Okay, take a look here. You know, these pearly whites, uh, they're just not right. So you got this guy here, and, and, and boom, you move it over here. And don't forget this guy here. You shove it over here. After Ferris Orthodontics get a hold of these teeth, bam! It's like, it's like magic for your teeth. So the thing is, when teeth are lined up, you, you know, you, you get a good smile. And it was Ferris Orthodontics that did that right there. They say it's cooked to perfection when he decides it is. They say the word flavor was named after him. They say you can beat Bobby Flay. What do they know? Beat Bobby Flay, Thursday night at 10 on Food Network. 
Watch Food Network, GVTC Channel 563. And welcome back to the Comal Bowl. Start of the second quarter. Smith Valley on top, 14-6. Cougars, though, the football as we start the second quarter. On second and three from their own 32. It is a run for Perez, and he is tracked down. What a play by Trey Moore, the sophomore defensive end. A lot of people were thinking that Moore was, looking, was uh, needing to make some plays at that defensive end spot. Only seven tackles all season. That one for a loss back in the 28th. We'll set up third down and seven. It was a great read as the quarterback Perez just carried out the fake as long as he could and kept it. He was right there to be the man. Third and seven for the Cougars. Perez throws complete to Farr on the receiver screen. Doesn't go anywhere. Farr is able to pick up about three there to bring up fourth down and four. The Cougars will go three and out for the third time in four possessions and punt the ball away. Great defense by the wide receivers on that side. Looked like Nutt, and then someone was there to help him. I didn't see who it was, but a great job of coverage and getting through the block on the wide receivers type screen. It has been a tough night punting so far for Platt. Here's the Ranger rush, and it's blocked. Blocked by Witcher, and the ball will sail the bounds of the 25-yard line. That is a zero-yard punt. <laughs> Nothing on the return. The Rangers again. Great field position and already on top by eight. Witcher has gotten close all year long. This time he got in and got just enough of it to keep it from going down the field. With special teams played tonight, has been dominated by Smithson Valley. A tough punt game so far for the Cougars for Aaron Platt. A missed opportunity at a PAT for the Cougars back in the first quarter. Great kickoffs by Mason Reed, who's also made his two PATs. And now the Rangers set up shop at the Canyon 25. Their kicking game as a whole has just been a problem this year. Williams in the offense with the football. It is a play fake for the senior, taking a shot to the end zone for Sill against one-on-one -on -one coverage in the back right corner. Can't quite hold it in. Broken up as Sill went down to the turf. Good defensive play downfield by Alex Bulabasis for Canyon, second and 10. You notice, I just noticed on the roster, he is free safety slash wide receiver. Mm -hmm. um, he did what good receivers do, and I don't know how much experience he has as a receiver, is he just kept the, the cornerback on his inside shoulder so he could catch the ball over the top. Levi made a great pass. The defender just got a hand on it. On second down and 10 from the Canyon 25, Williams will throw it again, this time complete to Gilliam. Fighting inside the 20 and picks up the first down of the Canyon 15 for a gain of 10. Earlier, by the way, I was going through the Rangers' big offensive line. I said Logan Smith was a junior. That was uh, wishful thinking on my part. Logan Smith couldn't, cannot return next year because he is a senior for Smithson Valley. And let me just tell you, Jeremiah Gilliam did a great job of carrying defenders with him again. He was caught about four yards shy of a first down, and he just muscled ahead and ended up getting a first down, and they're inside the 15. Gilliam held without a catch last week in shirts. Off first down with a 14, run for Fortone. Cutting outside the 10, breaks a tackle, darting inside the 5, and marked down at the 3, gains 11 more, and now goal to go for the Rangers. Not very often Smith and Valley's 0-3, and, and they're not real sure who their running back is, but Jacob Fortune has decided to put his name in the hat because he's running like a man possessed. He's going through the defense like anything right now. It is the Rangers' first 0-3 start since 1988, 30 years ago. The Rangers haven't lost four in a row in a single season since 1993, Coach Hill's first season. First and goal from the three. Williams up the middle himself, and he is tracked down. Good tackle there by the Cougars, making the play Dalton Johnson at the one-yard line, second and goal. Good defense that time. Rangers tried some deception with the, the fake on the wide receiver reverse, if you will, or run. And Levi just ran into someone that was a little bit quicker than he was that time. Williams, a team leading three rushing touchdowns on the season coming in. On second to go for the one, Williams to get himself <laughs> as he charges into the end zone. A flag is thrown. At the goal line, it's offsides against Canyon. The Cougars 
or the Rangers rather, will decline. And Williams now with four rushing scores in the year as Smith Valley's lead now at 20 to six. So Levi Williams with his 10th career rushing touchdown of the Rangers offense since the first drive of the game has not been stopped by Canyon. It is amazing that you can run the same play again and, and be more successful. PAT is up a line drive drilled <laughs> by Reed and credit the block punt by Trey Witcher setting up that short possession. 9.35 to go in the half. Swiss Valley 21, Canyon 6. Back with more Swiss Valley football on the Rangers Network. At Frost, we have the top rated app in the banking category. Yet it's the half star that's missing that has our attention. So we're always pushing, tweaking, and updating. Because even a little half star will keep us up at night. Join us on the Hill Country Mile in Bernie's historic downtown for an old-fashioned holiday kickoff with all the trimmings at the 19th annual Dickens on Main celebration, Thanksgiving weekend, November 23rd and 24th. Bring friends and family to welcome the Christmas season with live music, theatrical performances, carriage rides, Santa visits, and more along snowy Main Street. Admission is free, and the memories last a lifetime. Visit DickensOnMain.com for all the details. Back at the Comal Bowl, Rangers in control on top, 21-6, early second quarter, 9.35 to go. In Dove ring kick by Reed again. Will drop in the end zone for a touchback of the Cougars start. 75 yards shy of the end zone, now down by 15. Previous drive for Smithson Valley, four plays and 25 yards, minute 18 off the clock. It was a one-yard run by Levi Williams, a drive set up by a block punt from Trey Witcher. And now, Tony, in this game, three touchdowns for Smithson Valley, all scored by three different players. Yeah. For Tone, Wells, and now Williams. And all three runs. On first down for the Cougars, Perez under duress throws the ball away. Good pursuit there by the Rangers defense. Saw Tanner Holbeck come in to apply the pressure, second down and 10. I don't know if they'll look at this. Was he outside the tackle box and there was no receiver near? He got it past the line of scrimmage, so I guess he would have been outside the tackle box where he was. And with 21 points, Smith Valley already just two points shy of matching their season high in points scored this season. Second and 10 for the 25 for Perez in the offense. Little room for error right now. Down by 15. Motion from Garcia. Fake to him. Perez under pressure again. Throws over the middle. Pass is caught. Inside the 40. That's far. Inside the 20. Inside the 10. And down inside the 5 by Sill. They will mark him down to the 4-yard line. 71-yard pickup there for Canyon and Callan Farr. See how valuable Colin Farr is that time. He was hard to catch. Only Ethan Sill was able to get to him. But inside the five, they're knocking on the door. He has made a ton of big plays all season long. Five touchdowns scored this season. The average distance of yards, of yards covered by Farr on those touchdowns, 74 yards. First and goal. Cole Breath up the left side and tripped up at the two. Second and goal from there. Good tackle. Looks like it was well, 31. That's Holbeck. Yep. Defensive end. Tanner. And now second and goal. It would definitely should be four down territory for Canyon. Perez turns, gives cold breath up the right side this time. Nothing working there either. Stop at the two. No gain. Witcher on the tackle for Swisson Valley. And now third and goal. Kind of a stretch or off tackle. Just trying to get him up you know, to the corner a little quicker. They've given it to him twice, and he really, what, has he picked up anything in two downs? What do you do this time on third down? You know it's four down territory. I'm thinking the Cougars keep this one on the ground. Far the motion man on third and goal. Perez on the rollout, looking far his way, turns and makes the catch. Touchdown, Canyon. Callan Farr's fifth touchdown catch this season. And the Cougars climbing right back in it. Great pass by Perez. Put it right where only Farr could get it, and he brought it in. After the PAT is Platt. A lot of issues 
here for Canyon all season long, kicking PATs. And this is a kick by Platt. And the kick sails short, no good underneath the crossbar. 8.17 to go. First half, Rangers on top, 21 to 12. Back with more Smith Valley football on the Rangers Network. We've got spirit. Yeah, we do. Fill up your tank and support the Rangers, too. When you get gas, look for the Rangers Spirit Pump because Pit Stop and Fishers are donating a percentage of sales from that pump to the Smithson Valley Athletic Booster to support our student athletes. Get gas here and fill up the Booster Club's bank. Here's where you can find your spirit pumps. When you see it, pull up and fill up, Rangers. Smoky Mo's is great. You can feed a whole bunch of people all in a little bit of money. It's perfect for Friday nights. My boy's a football player and this fills him up. The brisket is awesome. I like brisket and sweet brisket. 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 I can't say it. <laughs> they have the best turkey, brisket, sausage in all of Comal County. I agree and the kids love it too. You're never going to play offensive line for the Rangers eating salad. Come get some beef. Get your dog up! Go Rangers! To the Comal Bowl here from Ranger Stadium. Smith Valley on top 21 at 12. A lot of big plays in this game. The Cougars just got another one of their own. A four play, 75 yard drive at a minute 18 for Canyon. Drive ending on a touchdown catch for Calvin Farr from three yards out. Farr also the big play on the drive. A 74 yard catch and run for Farr. This season he's averaging more than 34 yards per catch. 11 catches through his first four games for 373 yards. Unreal stuff for Farr. And so a kickoff by Platt, fielded it by Wells, a freshman at the 15, up to the 25, across the 30, a flag flies, as Wells has stood up at the 35-yard line. Likely to be a block in the back or holding. Mm -hmm. So the Rangers, instead of starting from the 35, will probably have better field position. Here's the call. Face mask? No? Hold. Yep, holding at Smithson Valley. And the Rangers back at offense. Previous drive only had to go 25 yards. And here the Rangers are going to have to go roughly about 80. Make it 75. Ball marked back at the 25-yard line. 8.09 to go in the second. 21-12 to 12 Ranger lead. Big time for a... a time-consuming drive here. Canyon's offense, by the way, a year ago averaged 18 points per game. This season averaging close to 40. Yeah. A lot of explosive plays this year for Canyon. First down with the 25. Williams hands off to Fertone. Clips it back to Wells. A block again downfield from Levi Williams. And Wells muscles his way for a couple of yards up to the 27, second down and eight. That one seemed to take a lot longer to happen. I think the defense reacted more quickly and they also went to the short side of the field. A couple of yards on it. And now we see Ethan Sill check back in a receiver for Smithson Valley and Wells check out. The Rangers looking for playmakers at receiver. Haven't gotten that so far in three games into the season. As opposed to a year ago that Williams could just pitch and catch with Trevon Merrick Water. Here's a Dart to Sill the catch and dives forward to the 34-yard line. And now third down of the yard to go. Successful pass, a little bit low. Sill had to go down to get it, but he did. A big reception makes it third and one, and that's much better than an incomplete pass. And maybe Sill's going to be that playmaker. I maybe. believe that's his third catch of the half already. Comes out here on third down of the yard. Cougar showing a blitz. For the Rangers audible. Fortone, the lone setback here. No Frash or Franco at running back. On third down, Williams himself is wrapped up short of the first down. Really nice play made by James Perez for Cannon. Will play both ways for the Cougars. And now fourth down and one to go. Perez did a nice job of just meeting him in the hole and Levi couldn't get away. See our first punt of the night by the Rangers. It is Jeremiah Gilliam out to punt, averaging about 36 yards a kick. And there is a dangerous playmaker to receive for Canyon. Calvin Farr back at his own 27 to receive. Line drive punt, 
by Gilliam. And the ball bounces at the 40. Picked up at the 39-yard line. So about 27 yards in the punt, no return. And the Cougars coming off another lightning quick 75-yard drive. Back on the football field offensively, down by nine. So the two scoring drives for Canyon, both covering 75 yards. Both drives only taking four plays to get there. First and ten at the four-yard line for the Cougars. The longest scoring drive we've had tonight has been seven plays. On first down, Perez from his own 40. On the rollout, the senior looks and throws for far again, and that time slung down by Betsy at the Canyon 49-yard line, gain of nine, second down at a yard to go. Well, there's no doubt Farr is the favorite receiver of Perez because that's the guy he looked for when he wants to throw the ball, and Farr's done nothing but catch the ball tonight. Last week, Farr, six catches against the Brothels for a buck 57 and two total touchdowns. Second is short. Perez pump fake. Now looking downfield, high throw, and it is incomplete for Garcia. Looked to be some confusion there. I don't think Perez was looking to pump fake. I don't think anybody got open quickly enough. And now third down and one to go. Kind of surprised because Garcia, their leading receiver coming in, really hasn't been targeted very much. And that one looked to be a catchable ball that he just didn't pull down. Garcia, more of that possession receiver, averaging only six yards a catch opposed to far, again, averaging more than 34. Third and a yard. Perez hands off Colbreth to his left, and he is tracked down at the 49 yard line by Mason Livingston. Short of the first down, fourth and less than a yard now for Canyon. Livingston now listed as one of the backup cornerbacks. Made a heck of a play there to stop him from the first down. Now the Cougars do send out Platt to punt. If I'm Swiss Valley, I'm in punt safe right now. Sill is back deep to return. Platt will punt the football wow. away, nearly blocked again by Witcher. And the ball will shoot out of bounds, and they're going to mark it out at about the 20-yard line. Or no. Make it the 15. Good punt there from Platt's best tonight. More than halfway through the second quarter, a 21-12 Ranger lead here in the Comal Bowl. So Smithson Valley gets the ball back from their own 15. 5.26 to go, so plenty of time. I said this at the 8.09 mark. Now I'll say it again at the 5.26 mark. You need to put together a time-consuming drive with many first downs. Take the rest of the half to do it. About 36 yards in the punt there from Platt. And now first down, Rangers at the 16. Williams hands off to Fortone. Sliced down short of the 20. They'll mark him down to the 19. Gain of three there. Second down and seven as we approach five minutes to go in the second. And the Rangers on top, 21 to 12. We haven't talked about it a whole lot, even though we've mentioned it several times. It's kind of unusual that Fortune would be the primary back tonight with Franco and Frash getting all the carries coming into this game. Again, Franco is out in uniform on the sidelines, looking for Frash right now for the Rangers. He did start the game. On second down, it is a screen attempt for Kuykendall, but again, cannot wrap up the football. It is a drop of the 20, and now third down and seven. Did you say a drop? Another one for That'd the Rangers, the fourth. their fourth, and for Kuykendall is third. A three and out here for the Canyon defense could do wonders for the Cougars. Yeah. Someone needs to make a play. On third and seven from the 19. Williams against the blitz, steps up, throws deep middle for Gilliam. He dropped it at the 30-yard line. The ball, though, thrown a little bit behind Gilliam. And the Rangers do, in fact, go three and out. That's... At this point, when you've had two, what what would amount to be kind of critical drives here uh -huh. at the end of the half, that drops just don't fit. Gilliam stays out to punt the ball away to far. Line drive punt. Actually, it's McKay back to return. Great Ranger roll inside the 25. 
And will finally skirt out of bounds at about the 19-yard line. So from 119 to the other, that's a 61-yard punt. And a late flag is thrown. It just got thrown just now at the Canyon 44-yard line. Thrown by our head official. Perhaps a sideline warning? No, it is against Canyon. So after a great punt, some more yards marked off. And the Cougars, next possession starts deep on their own end of the field and trying to make it a one possession game, trailing 21 to 12. We've seen uh, Gilliam have a couple of good punts this year. That might have been the best one we've seen, not just in yardage, but just the way it looked and the way it happened. His previous long was 52, that one against 61 yards. With the penalty, first down and 10 from the nine. Perez hands off to Colbreth up the middle. Colbreth crawls up to the 15 for five. With 4.26 to go in the second quarter. Rangers on top, 21-12. They have led throughout. McElroy with the tackle. First time we've called his name tonight. Had a big game against Madison here at Ranger Stadium a couple of weeks ago. 15 tackles, two for loss at a sack. On second down, Cole Breath has his number called again, and the Rangers bury him at the 18 as a flag flies behind the play. As it stands right now, third down and two for Canyon. Have to see what that flag is because they're throwing it all the way back to where the tackle was made. You think maybe a face mask or something? The call is yes. Good call there, Tony. Face mask against Smithson Valley. Well, gift wrapped a first down for Canyon, and the Cougars could use it. Wow. That can be a difference maker. Again, both teams on a bye next week. After the bye, Smithson Valley on the road at East Central two weeks from now. Canyon, meanwhile, is at home against Clemens. Tough opponents coming up both ways. On first down, Perez work up the play fake, takes a shot down, field man open at the 35-yard line. Inside the 15 and a touchdown. Jacob Garcia on a 67-yard play. Another big play for Canyon's offense. Wow. He was not open, Brant. He was wide open. Nobody saw him run down the field. And Perez was fortunate enough to put it close enough to him to catch. PAT is up for Platt. This one is good. And makes it a 21-19 game with 3.46 to go in the first half. Back with more Smith-Sinelli football on the Rangers Network. Oh, look at that. It's starting to feel like a mega pick. I'm loving this place already. You're digging, you're going through the layers. This is American history, and it's for sale. I'll take it. Watch History Channel, GBTC, Channel Back inside of Ranger Stadium for the Comal Bowl. 21-19, the Ranger lead. 3.46 to go here in the second quarter. Big plays all night tonight for Canyon. They have had plays of 63, 74, and now 67 yards. The last one, a touchdown. Xavier Perez to Jacob Garcia, his first score this season. Coming off a perfectly executed play action fake by the senior quarterback Xavier Perez, looking very comfortable so far tonight. Platt's kickoff, a squib picked up by the freshman Wells at the 20. Wells looking for a crease at the 30 yard line, cuts across the 35 and down 
at the 40-yard line. Rangers at one point led 21-6, but the offense has gone quiet here in the second quarter. Meanwhile, the Cougars offensively, Tony, in a lot of rhythm right now. The Cougars are indeed, and that's probably a good thing. The quarter's about ready to end, but I, I think the biggest issue right now is can the Rangers get a first down mm -hmm. and run out the half? Remember, Smithson Valley will get the football to start the third quarter. On first down, Williams again working with Portone in the backfield. No Frash, no Franco. On first down, Williams himself on the run inside of midfield, cutting to his left inside the canyon, 30-yard line, and finally stumbles down at the canyon, 19. 40-yard got up there for the senior quarterback, Levi Williams. He is looking really sharp tonight, throwing the ball, and now we've seen him roll off some runs that have been impressive. That one coming away from a sure tackler just past midfield and getting an extra 25 yards. This game was all defense for all of about four minutes <laughs> in the first quarter. Since then, good luck getting a stop. Approaching three minutes to go in the quarter, Rangers of football leading by two at the Canyon 19. Wells, a freshman in motion, takes a handoff with a sweep. Wells looking for a cutback lane and instead cut down at the 19. No gain there. Mason Coots for the safety spot, the tackle for Canyon, second to 10. I'll tell you, no gain on the play, but I, I will say this about Cason Wells. He knows when to cut back. We've seen it on his previous touchdown run, and then we've seen it a couple of other times. But he knows they're stretching it out. He seems to know where those seams are to turn it back up. This time it just didn't have any room because there were too many defenders. Smith Valley looking for some momentum going into the halftime locker rooms and for a two-possession lead, preferably. Now set up second and 10 of the Canyon, 19. Williams barking with a snap. Back to throw on the play fake. Low throw, but reeled in. No, incomplete the ruling. Looking for the tight end, Austin Howell, the near side of the field, defended by Kuntz again. And now third and 10. I don't know if you call that a drop, but it sure looked like he had it, and then the ball squirted out when he came up. Third and 10 from the 19. Rangers are not in a position where drop passes are anything but problems. And a lot of third and longs yeah. for Smith Valley so far in the second quarter. As we, as we see Kuykendall check back in that receiver, one of the receivers plagued with drops so far tonight. Third and 10 for the 19. Here's a blitz from Canyon. Williams steps up, passes tipped, and incomplete. The Rangers breathe a sigh of relief there as there weren't any defenders in the area to pick that pass off, and now Smith Valley will send out Mason Reed to attempt from 36 yards away. Twelve made field goals in the career of Reed, looking for his 13th and for a five-point lead. Gilliam the holder. Set his down, kick is up, a line drive, misses. It remains a 21-19 Ranger lead. 13 and answered score by Cannon and more momentum here for the visitors from New Braunfels. You at least were able to turn, flip the field with the long run by Williams. So it, it's an 80 yard run for or an 80 yard drive for them, but that's been nothing for them with the big passes and the big runs. And now if you're Smithson Valley, the goal is to take the lead into the halftime yeah. locker rooms. You would think that'd be relatively a safe bet to make with Canyon backed up at his own 20 yard line, but so many big plays tonight. I'm not sure I'm taking that bet. From the 20, Perez going to work, throws, the pass is caught. Another strike thrown by Perez. And again connects with Farr at the 25 for a five yard pickup. And I don't know if you can expect much better coverage than uh, Jalen Nutt had on that play because he was draped on top of Farr as he caught the ball, but Farr has become quite a weapon tonight. I think you're seeing the veteran really showing Perez tonight, a three-year starter. Tough goal with his first two years, but looking pretty good so far in 2018. On second and five, he'll run it himself. Perez into traffic. A head first dive to the 27 for two. And with 90 seconds to go in the half, a timeout is called by Canyon. 
Now faced with third down and three. Not a bad timeout with plenty of time left in the half. And a, I think for them a critical third down because their punting game isn't good. You give Smithson Valley the ball. Uh, the Rangers have two timeouts left. Uh, give them a ball in a position where, you know, you, they could conceivably take over by midfield and kind of a chess game between the two coaches right now as we expected. And again, this game has a playoff feel to it tonight because the loser would fall to 0-2. And both teams have yet to play Steele and Judge in the season. Canyon has yet to play Clemens. There is such little room for error in the district if you want to make the top four. You fall to 0-2, you're going to have a tough time making the top four. Yeah, to be fourth, you have to be at least 3-3. Three and three. Yep. At least. At least. Go down three yards to go. So this game could mean your season, even though we haven't even hit October yet. On third down and three. Perez off the play fake. This has been a big play for Canyon all night. Not this time. Great covers downfield. Better pass rush in the sack. Back at the 20 yard line brings up fourth down. Great coverage by Romano and Sill had bracketed far on the left side and they gave uh, Perez nowhere to throw and the sack happened because of that. Clock is stopped, minute 23 to go as the Rangers spin their second timeout. Coach Hill looking to give the offense one more shot here before halftime. You knew far would be, especially the way, uh, was it Garcia went in motion. And by the mm -hmm. way, that was illegal motion because he turned up field before the snap, mm -hmm. but they didn't blow, they didn't throw that flag. Uh, but you knew with Garcia going that way, far would be the object. And as Perez rolled this way, it was perfect bracketing with Romano in front and still over the top. Gave him no room to throw. You kind of wonder what New Braunfels did last week to slow down this Canyon offense. The Cougars only scored two touchdowns a week ago, led 7-0 early, but then New Braunfels scored 33 unanswered points in a rout in the Worst Bowl. Platt back to punt from the zone 10. Here's the rush, gets the punt away. Sill calls for the fair catch. She'll make it at the 45-yard line. 35-yard punt. No return. Buck 17 left. Two-point Ranger lead. Looking for some breathing room, breathing room before we hit halftime. Minute 17 with one timeout for the Rangers. Mm -hmm. Same old thing we've been talking about all day. Somebody's going to have to make some plays. Whether it's Williams, whether it's Fortune, the running back, or one of the receivers making a catch and taking it down the field. See Kuykendall, Wells, and Sill all checking in at receiver here on first down. Wells, the motion man. Williams on the keeper, up the middle, and he is buried at about the 49-yard line in Canyon Territory. The clock will tick, closing, closing in on a minute to go, and the Rangers in the hurry up. You know, if, if we notice it up here, it's whenever a receiver runs past Levi, that he runs the ball up the middle. You have to believe the defense is catching on to that, too, and the Rangers appear to be in no real hurry here. I'm about to say, I thought it would be the hurry up, but a lot of shuffling of the deck there in terms of personnel, and finally the huddle broke by Williams with 40 seconds to go. Maybe see what this play does and then decide whether you're going to hurry. I suppose on second and four, Williams throws for Gilliam and dropped it. Pass a little bit high at the 45-yard line. Covered from McKay and Watanabe for Canyon. Clock stops, 34 seconds to go, and now third down and four. Kind of surprised <laughs> that we've dropped as many passes as we have. That, not a great pass, but when it hits you in the hands, and you, you got to have a chance to pull that one in. Unofficially, I want to say six drops so yeah. far in the first half. Third down and four. At the Canyon, 49. Snap to Williams off the play fake. And a pump fake, dumps it off to Fortone. With room to run inside the 35-yard line. Inside the 25 and out of bounds there. Stops the clock, 24 seconds to go. And boy, Jacob Fortone 
has been a really valuable weapon so far tonight for Smithson Valley. And you save the timeout because he was able to keep his legs churning with defenders on him and get out of bounds at the 25. A great saving of a timeout there on a great catch and run. Jacob Fortone only one offensive yeah. touch the first three games of the season. But again, a very big weapon so far tonight. From the 25, Williams on the run. Whistles blow first. The ball starts, Whistle Valley. Penalties were a big issue last week for the Rangers. Flagged seven times in the 19-13 loss at Clemens. Remember, Smith Valley does have one timeout left. One timeout, 24 seconds to march 30 yards for a late second quarter touchdown. This ball has to go down the field somewhat. Canyon playing soft coverage, only dropping, or dropping eight in coverage rather. Pass over the middle, wow. caught by the tight end Howell. Howell into the secondary, down to the 13 yard line for 17. Clock stops, 18 seconds to go to move the chains. And the hurry up, Williams spikes the football with 16 seconds left. Again, saving the timeout after the first down. Now you have three plays on starting on second down and 16 seconds from the 13. You know, again, it's obvious, but you probably have to throw the ball in the end zone here. You do have a timeout if you're short. Williams breaks the huddle. Great catch by Howell, by the way. Great catch. Been very reliable tonight. Williams throwing end zone for Gilliam. Over the shoulder, does he make the catch and bounce? Yes, he yes, did. He what a throw by Levi Williams. Touchdown, Smithson Valley. Wow. Jeremiah Gilliam with his second touchdown catch this season. And the Rangers now a 27-19 lead. One of the better throws of the year by Levi Williams. Reed's PAT, kick is up, it is good. And with 11 seconds to go, Smithson Valley back out to a nine point advantage, 28 to 19. And the Rangers have had two late quarter touchdowns in the game so far tonight. Score was six seconds to go in the first quarter. And again with 11 seconds to go in the second. Final drive for a touchdown in the quarter. Six plays, 55 yards, a minute 56. Gilliam, again, the, we saw Sill do it earlier even though he wasn't able to come up with the catch. Perfect job of not reaching for the ball until it got there, keeping the defender who's not looking at the ball from putting up his hands too early. The Ranger drives have been long and methodical tonight where can canyons have been lightning quick, getting a lot of those chunk <laughs> plays all evening. Okay, you're telling me the difference of a seven or a six-yard, six-play drive versus a four-play drive. But, yes, I understand what you're saying sure. because each of their drives has a 60 or 70-yard right. play in it. Mm -hmm. Smithson Valley hasn't had that opportunity. Kickoff by Reed is a line drive that will go off oh, the back him. of the returner. Platt picked up, and he is tripped up, make a cold breath of returner. Tripped up at the eight with seven seconds to go. Colbreth was trying to duck underneath it. <laughs> it hit him in the back. A fortuitous <laughs> bounce if you're Smithson Valley. I, just get out of the way. Yep. Just get out of the way. That could have been a back-breaking yeah. touchdown if you can, by the way, because, again, Smithson Valley will essentially have back-to-back -back possessions here because they get the football to start the third quarter. Seven seconds to go. Should be a routine play for Cannon. It is a run for Colbreth up the middle. And he is slammed down by McElroy at the 15. And that will end the first half. And what an entertaining half it was. 24 minutes in the books in the 2018 Comal Bowl. Your score, Smithson Valley 28, Canyon 19. Back with more Smithson Valley football on the Rangers Network. At Frost, we have the top-rated app in the banking category. Yet it's the half star that's missing that has our attention. So we're always pushing, tweaking, and updating. Because even a little half star will keep us up at night. 
Since I've had GVTC installed in my office, I've been able to get a lot more done. With fiber speeds up to a gig a second, I can turn in all my schoolwork on time, keep up on social media, and watch game film with no interruptions. Whoa, we haven't even played that game yet. Yeah, it's that fast. Enjoy uninterrupted entertainment with your favorite apps through our professionally installed GVTC Wi-Fi home network. Log on to GVTC.com to sign up today. Inside Ranger Stadium for the 2018 Comal Bulls. Musa Valley on top of Canyon, 28 to 19 at the break. And now here at the half on the Rangers Network, we present to you the playing of the Swiss Valley Marching Band. Enjoy. With GVTC Connect Home, I can get 24 hour a day security monitoring and even get alerts on my phone while I'm on the field at practice. I can lock and unlock my doors, arm and disarm the system remotely, and even see who's on my front porch right here on my smartphone. Coach, wipe your feet. Let GVTC give you peace of mind when you're not at home. Sign up for GVTC Connect Home today. We've got spirit, yeah we do. Fill up your tank and support the Rangers too. 
When you get gas, look for the Ranger Spirit Pump because Pit Stop and Fishers are donating a percentage of sales from that pump to the Smithson Valley Athletic Booster to support our student athletes. Get gas here and fill up the Booster Club's bank. Here's where you can find your spirit pumps. When you see it, pull up and fill up, Rangers. And welcome back to Ranger Stadium for the final football game of the month of September for Smithson Valley. Rangers on top as we get ready to start the third quarter, 28 to 19. Bring Freeman alongside Tony Brubaker here on the Rangers network. Entertaining first half, Tony Smithson Valley led throughout, but Canyon did not uh, go away quietly. A lot of big plays from the Cougars, and we are in store for what should be another entertaining half of football. We certainly hope so. It's a uh, a critical game for both teams because, as you've said many times, no one wants to start District 0-2, and the loser of this game does just that. You look ahead to, again, the next game for these two teams, both on a bye next week. The entire 26-6A district is on a bye next week. Up next for Canyon, though, two weeks from now, a home game against Clemens. Smith Valley next plays on the road at East Central. Remember, the Cougars won the toss and elected to receive in the first half. So, Smith Valley will get the football to start the second half. And also keep this in mind, the Rangers did score with 11 seconds to go in the, in the second quarter. So, some momentum on the Rangers' side as well as they get the football to start the third quarter here. And remember, the kicking game for the Cougars has not been good in any form or fashion, so kickoffs have not been one of their favorite things to do. Here is Platt to do the honors for the Cougars, and the second half is underway with a deep kick. Wow. Sails behind Sill into the end zone, and the Rangers will start at their own 25, leading 28 to 19. Haven't seen him kick it more than 30 yards all night, and that one he gets it into the end zone. You look back at some of the scoring drives for the Rangers back in the first half. 65 yards, 50 yards, a 25-yard drive set up by a block punt from Trey Witcher. And the final drive to end the second quarter, six plays, 55 yards, a touchdown throw, Williams to Jeremiah Gilliam. And still we see Jacob Fortona running back to start the second half. On first down, motion for the freshman to Wells, takes a handoff on the sweep, has a good downfield block from Fortone, and Wells tripped up in the secondary at the Ranger 36, gain of 11 before he's brought down by Cole Seeley and a Ranger first down. You know, we haven't seen those wide receiver sweeps very much at all this season, and already tonight that's the third one that Wells has run. This kind of an unusual... Maybe they've seen something their defense doesn't do well. And maybe the Rangers hadn't found the right guy to run right. the play. Maybe yeah. that guy is the freshman, Case in the Wells. After pickup of 11, it's first down from their own 36. Williams with the give for Tone. For Tone, nice powerful run up to the 41 for a gain of six before he is dropped by Dallin and Watanabe. Rangers again staying ahead of the chains. Second down and five. Good job, Brooks, as uh, Garrett Brooks, the sophomore, is the, the fullback, if you will, with uh, Fortone, the running back. And again, no Mark Franco tonight. Right. Haven't seen Frash since early in the first quarter. And no Chris Rivera at receiver this evening. But both Rivera and Franco are in uniform. Brooks, the motion man, on second and five. Williams on the quarterback keeper, makes one man miss, charges near the midfield logo and down to the 48. You know, Tony, I've noticed as the Rangers pick up another first down that the Cougars are getting really good penetration, but they're not making the tackles at the point of attack. And we'll, we'll have to pay more attention, and you don't know if those are trap blocks where you're assuming they're going to come in there, but that time one of them had Levi and just didn't tackle him. Little more than a minute gone by the third. Rangers the ball in the first possession of the second half. Three plays, two first downs. Nearing midfield, Williams off the play fake. Flushed out to his right, and the senior will dump it off to Wells, the, or the uh, freshman receiver. I beg your pardon, that was Brooks the catch. 
The sophomore with his first offensive touch this season picks up two. Kaysen Wells was open. Levi just didn't have time to find him. It was a long post route where he went about 20 yards before he turned in. And Levi had to scramble before he turned in, but he had the inside route. Uh, would have been a big play. And now we see junior wideout Jalen Radabaugh check in here. Play clock winding down. The huddle has yet to break. Play clock under 10 seconds. The Rangers shift personnel. They're going to have to call a timeout here. Play clock got a three. They got a hurry. And Coach Hill does spin that first timeout. And it comes with 9.49 to go in the third quarter. You wonder how sometimes you get to the end of the play clock. You don't want to ever say this as an actual fact, but that time the coaching staff had a hard time getting the play in. And it's a big play, second and eight midfield. They just couldn't personnel. It was a, it was a, a situation where they couldn't figure out personnel-wise what they wanted and what they wanted to run. Uh, the players were getting antsy because they saw the play clock going down. Just one of those where the timeout ends up being better so you can figure it out. It looked like an indecision between Austin Howell, the tight end, around the ball, the receiver. You want to go big, you want to go fast. And by the time the Rangers decided, time was running out. And let's be honest, Tau, uh, Howell is the tight end, but he hasn't lined up tight all game. Right. He's been the uh, slot receiver, if you will, on every formation. And it is Howell here out of the timeout on second down at eight from midfield. Motion from Wells, the freshman. And whistles blow before the snap. Ball starts with the Valley. That was that jet sweep again. Wells would have been the recipient. It's kind of funny. You call the timeout to prevent yourself from being flagged five yards for delay of game, and you get it anyway on a false start out of the timeout. So your second and eight is now second and 13. And now we see Nick Kuykendall check in at receiver. With again the play clock winding down, down to 10 seconds, just as Williams breaks the huddle. From their own 45, the senior facing a blitz. Williams flushed to his left. Williams on the run, makes one man miss, Worley. And then finally spun around at the Canyon sideline and forced out of the 46. A lot of running there for Williams for a yard. Yeah. And now third down and 12. Well, when they send two guys in blitz and it's kind of get out of the way. And I, I think Levi thought he had escaped to the left of the formation, but didn't see anybody down the field. So he didn't really have any choices. Rangers again tonight looking for their first win of 2018. Three losses all coming down to the wire. They have led throughout tonight. Now faced with third down and 12 for their own 46. Williams on the run. Up the gut. Inside of midfield. Dragged down. Inside of Canyon territory. The Cougars 39-yard line. The Cougars needed, or the Rangers rather, needed 12 for a first down. And Williams gives them 14. Six three, two oh five quarterback at a times. Williams really tough to bring down. Good blocks from his running backs again. The quarterback draws, but a really effective play all night for Smith and Ballon. From the Canyon, 39. Williams tosses it to Fortone to the outside of the 35. Stumbles to the 24-yard line. And they'll mark him down to the 22. 17 yards there for Jacob Fortone, who again wasn't touching the football the first three games of the season. Here's the funny thing. You made the comment earlier that the, the Cougars were getting into the backfield. They just weren't making tackles. Well, all three defensive linemen slanted to the right and beat the offensive linemen, got in the backfield, but Fortone had already beat him to the outside. 5'7", 170. Fortone not easy to track down either. One of the smaller players in terms of height on the field. First down for the 22. Williams throws, catches made, breaking a tackle. No, Radaball the catch. Ankle tackled by Worley at the 15. Seven yard pickup of first down. Good first down play for Smithson Valley off of Radaball's first catch. Second and three. He scores if he breaks that tackle. He does, we, doesn't he? We both thought he was going to, but he certainly didn't. 
I'll say this, Rattleball showed us something towards the end of last year, looks apart at 6'2", 175, but is yet to really break out in 2018. Second and three from the Cougar 15. Williams with the give, won't come yet because the Rangers are whistled for a false start. And essentially you just turned that seven yard catch by Rattleball into two. Someone in the backfield that time, didn't they kind of hop a little bit? Or? I think it may have been Fortone. Yeah. You're right now, second and eight. You've seen that a couple of times. Fortone scored the Rangers' first touchdown of the game back in the first quarter, 11-yard score. As Kuykendall checks back in at receiver. Time-consuming drive. Tony, you've been looking yes. for that all night tonight. Drive more than four minutes old. And now the Cougar 20-yard line, and now Canyon has to call for a timeout. Wow. A defender, McKay, was late coming off the field. So on the same drive, both teams have used a timeout as we've played, what, five minutes and 20 seconds? I mentioned the Rangers. Four minutes and 20 seconds. 0-3 this year. The Cougars are 2-2. Two two. Open the season with two wins. Back-to-back -back losses last two weeks. A team that has won just two games each of the previous two seasons. And really, Canyon has had a hard time playing against the district's best. You go back to 2012, essentially, when this district was formed, Wismison Valley, Canyon, New Braunfels, and Judson, the Cougars have gone over against the heavyweights. Judson, Smithson Valley, Steele, and Clemens. Some close calls there, and Tony, one of them you brought up from a year ago, this game at Cougar Stadium, a game won by the Rangers, but one that came down to the wire. Yeah. That was a 14-9 Ranger win. Low scoring game, ugly. It was ugly, right? Ugly. Not the case tonight. Yeah. Now, ugly at times, sure. They ended with penalties and things of that nature, Drop but passes. scoring, no issue tonight. Out of the timeout by Canyon. Each team two left in the second half. It's second and eight for the 20. Williams off the play fake, great protection. Takes a shot in the end oh. zone for Radabaugh, defended by McKay. Incomplete, and now third out and eight to go. Williams a year ago against Canyon with better weapons, namely in Pierce and Javon Merrick Woodard, was just six of 15 passing at Canyon a year ago for 114 yards. Did we run the ball well against them that night? Not Jeez. really, the two teams combined yeah. for 450 yards of offense, yeah. nearly as many yards punting in that game. Third and eight for the offense from the Canyon 20. Williams on the keeper again. Up the middle, Williams will walk into the end zone untouched. On the draw again, 20-yard gallop. The painter for Williams, touchdown, Smithson Valley. Well, he was largely untouched. So the Rangers' first third quarter possession goes 75 yards in four minutes and 30 seconds, ending on a touchdown run by Levi Williams, his second tonight. On the ninth play of the drive. Pick us up for Reed. Kick again is true. 7.30 to go, third quarter. Rangers 35, Cougars 19. Back with more Smithson Valley football on the Rangers Network. They say it's cooked to perfection when he decides it is. They say the word flavor was named after him. They say you can beat Bobby Flay. What do they know? Beat Bobby Flay, Thursday night at 10 on Food Network. Watch Food Network, GVTC, channel 563. Principal Wall. Do I need to make an appointment with you at Dr. Bayless at Snoring Solutions so you can get a better night's sleep? Yes. 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 Dr. Bayless and Snoring Solutions can help you get a good night's sleep without the use of CPAP machines or surgery. Visit Snoring Solutions today. And welcome back to Ranger Stadium. Smith Valley is on top, 35-19. 
On third down and eight, Levi Williams on the keeper goes 20 yards untouched for the score. His second rushing touchdown of the night. Ensuing kickoff by Reed. What else is new? Into the end zone again for a touchback. And the Rangers double the football. Is this a Rangers score? Or did the ball get picked up by the Cougars? Is this a safety for Smithson Valley? A lot of celebration on the Rangers side. What's the call? It is a touchback. I think the I think the rule now is the minute the ball goes into the end zone, it's a touchback. Is that not correct? Coach Hill arguing. Smith Valley's case. I think the Rangers believe the ball was touched before it went into the end zone. But if I if I'm I'm going to guess here, intelligently guess. I think even if it's not possessed, if it's a, if it, whatever they call that word, if it's not fumbled, but if it hits you and goes into the end zone, it's still a touchback. Anyway, Kenyon has the ball at the 25. And we resume. Rangers with their largest lead of the game. Perez on first down, throws complete for far. And far or make it uh, Garcia is sent it a bounce on the catch of the 29 for a gain of four yards. Big first half for Xavier Perez had a touchdown run of the first quarter and a couple of big passes, a 67-yard hookup to Garcia for a touchdown and a 71-yard strike to far in the first half as well. On second and six, Perez on the quarterback keeper lunging forward to the 30. Or actually, no, back of the 29, no gain there. And quickly, just like that, it's third down and six to go. I don't know if that was a design play. It didn't have a whole lot of hope for him, though, because he's cutting right back into traffic. A lot of feast or famine for Kenya's offense so far in the game. Three downs or long plays on third down. Cole Brett is corkscrewed down by Zoig. Nice sure-handed tackle made by the Ranger linebacker, Tom Zoig. Team leading 26 stops coming into the game tonight. Big game last week at Clemens, 10 tackles and two for loss, and the junior with that stop sets up fourth down and five. After the three and out, Platt punting again for Canyon, heading towards Sill, and bobbles it. Dives with the football, though, in traffic at the 35-yard line. I'll go down as a 35-yard punt. No return. Approach the halfway point of the third quarter. 6.24 to go. Smith Valley, the football, leading 35-19. to Interesting to see is the Rangers, their second drive of the half, and their first one a nice, long, lengthy possession. This one a little bit shorter if they get to the pay dirt, but... Just take up some clock again. Mm -hmm. You took up, what did we say, four and a half minutes. Let's get a five-minute drive. Chew up most of the rest of the third quarter and just put an end to this right here. The Rangers were looking for the breakout game on offense this season, averaging a 17 points per game in the first three games of the year, and they broke it out tonight. And on first down, Levi Williams breaks through inside of midfield, and he will gallop into the end zone untouched again. 65-yard rub to pay dirt there for Levi Williams. Rangers on top, 41-19. Is that not amazing that the big plays all belonged to Canyon in the first half? Here in the second half, the Rangers are coming up with some big plays. PAT by Reed is up, it's good, and the Rangers are rolling here at Ranger Stadium. Looking to pick up their first win of the season on top, 42 to 19. 6-13 left, third quarter. Back with more Smith Valley football on the Rangers Network. If you bank at Frost, we'll help keep your money safe. If you use your Frost debit card, the chip will make it more secure. If there's a suspicious transaction on your card, you'll get an alert. If you do, you can freeze your card with the Frost app. If you lose your phone, Touch ID login will help keep the app secure. Of course, if all you need is help from people who care, we've got that too. 
With GVTC Connect Home, I can get 24-hour a day security monitoring and even get alerts on my phone while I'm on the field at practice. I can lock and unlock my doors, arm and disarm the system remotely, and even see who's on my front porch right here on my smartphone. Coach, wipe your feet. Let GVTC give you peace of mind when you're not at home. Sign up for GVTC Connect Home today. When the score got to be 21-19, Smithson Valley Ranger fans were sweating a bit as the Cougars were showing there for real. But since then, 21 had answered by the Rangers in control now. 42-19, ensuing kickoff by Reed. Will bounce out of the back of the end zone. No controversy here. Cougar football, a lot of work to do. Now down by 23 points. And what a start to this half for Ranger senior quarterback Levi Williams. The last two plays, the Rangers offense has run. Williams has run untouched. 85 yards for two scores. The last one, a 65-yard house call. On first down, Perez with the give to Colbreth up the middle. McElroy finally wraps him off with a 36 after a gain of 11 for Cougar first down. First time that Colbreth has had a seam where he didn't get hit until he was six, seven yards down the field. Season high in points scored this year for the Rangers by a long shot. Previous high was 23 points. On first down, Colbreth again up the middle, bolts across the 45-yard line inside of midfield and to the Ranger 49. 15 more there for Nate Colbreth. First down, Canyon. All of a sudden, the offensive line is creating holes. Colbreth is bursting through them. Colbreth had a 63-yard run earlier in the game, back in the first quarter, setting up the Cougars' first score. First down for the 49. Perez, handoff Colbreth again that time on the tackle, Trey Moore at the 48, holding Colbreth to a yard. Second down, nine to go, 525 left through quarter. Rangers on top, 42 to 19. This is the difference between a 10-yard run and a, uh, and a one-yard run. Everything seemed in slow motion that time. The offensive line didn't burst off the ball as they had, and the handoff took longer. Perez, the senior, going to work on second down and nine from the Ranger 48. Back to throw, Perez pressured. Takes off and runs into a couple of Ranger defenders. McElroy and Zoig on the tackle. Short of the first down is Perez, the Ranger 42. Gain of six, third down and two to go. He looked like initially he wanted to throw it to Farr, but Farr wasn't even running her out. He just ran into the defender like he was going to block the whole time. So maybe that was just a fake. And then he scrambled for, what, six, seven yards. Third down and three, they'll mark it at the Ranger 42. Perez hands to Cole Brett, puts on the brakes for a second. And then charging up to the 38 and enough for the first down for Nate Colbreth. Senior tailback has looked really good all year long, but again is without his battery mate tonight. Seth Haney, broken collarbone early in the game last week against New Braunfels. He's the, the lone horse back there for the Cougars this evening. And they don't have anybody. No one else has come in to spell to, him at all. To do anything. No. Colbreth, I believe, has taken every snap tonight at running back. On first down for the 38. It is a play fake Perez with a throw over the middle behind the receiver, but caught down to the 23. And that was Garcia, another catch for the Canyon Junior. That was a great catch by Garcia. You mentioned the ball a little bit behind him and low, and he went down and got it as he's getting hit by two different defenders. Cougars in the up-tempo offense here. Perez hands a cold breath up the gut, cutting to his left. And chopped down by Christian Romano. Ball comes out, but the line judge will rule that Cole Breath was down. And they'll hold Cole Breath to a gain of a few yards there. Second down at about seven coming up. And one thing, Tony, I've noticed, Canyon's starting or starters are pretty good, but it's a team lacking depth. Right. I agree with you. We don't see a backup quarterback of the roster listed behind Perez. Who knows what would happen if he goes out. He has been the only one to take snaps at quarterback this year for the Cougars. Second and five, they'll mark it from the 20. Low snap to Perez, a broken play of sorts. Perez awkwardly goes down at the 17. So turns that broken play into a gain of three. And now third down and three for Canyon. A little awkward on the finish was uh, Zoig who had him low and then Witcher hit him high. 
seems to be all right, though, as we talk about him having no backup. And nobody in the backfield along with Perez here. On third down, and they'll say five for the 18. Perez on the rollout throws, and it is complete again. Right around the 10-yard line, Garcia uh, make that far, the catch. And this drive will continue for Canyon. Again, good coverage. Betsy, I think, on the coverage over there. And the, the defender's right there, and the ball's just thrown good, and Farr makes a great catch. First down from the 11, Colbreth. Left side again, it's Sill on the tackle there for Smithson Valley, along with McElroy. Gain of five there for the Cougars. Good drive here for Canyon. Down 42-19, approaching two minutes to go in the third quarter. No more room for error tonight if you're the Cougars. On second down, Cole Breath again, and again the left side. And corkscrew down to the two. The Cougars really favoring the left side of the offensive line of this drive. A lengthy drive. Almost 12 form plus minutes gone now. Double digits on the number of plays they've run. That's not bad for Smithson Valley because there's so many big plays early in the game for Canyon. If the Cougars are going to strip score, make them earn it. Right. On third and short. Perez the keeper and he is dragged down by his jersey. It was McElroy that slowed him up by dragging down the sleeve of the jersey of Perez and now fourth down coming up for Canyon and the Cougars certainly going for it. I don't think they have any choice at this point but you're right McElroy a great job of just hanging on long enough for help to come. Fourth down and two inside the five. Jumbo package here for Canyon. Perez with the handoff to Colbreth. Colbreth behind left guard, charges into the end zone. Touchdown, Canyon. That was a well-earned score for the Cougars. And like you mentioned, the Rangers will take that when they have to take almost five minutes to go the length of the field. So Nate Colbreth with his ninth rushing score of the season already. And his first tonight. And the Cougars going for two. Whistles before the snap. Timeout, Smithson Valley. And right now the score stands 42-25 in favor of the Rangers. Cold breath again last week with Seth Haney going out of the game early, was asked to carry the ball 30 times against the Brothels and Unicorns. Didn't make life easy in cold breath. Off those 30 carries, cold breath only picked up 93 yards. Puzzled, down 17. The extra point seems to be the kick is the right thing to do to stay within two scores. Mm -hmm. If you miss on the extra point, you're down 17. Now you're three scores out. I think this goes back to the kicking issues the well, Cougars they, have had all season. The last ex extra point they tried, they made. Maybe you're, you're gambling that Platt yeah. can't go two can't for do, two in PATs. Do, can't do two in a row. Yep. Ah. So this to make it a 15-point game. Perez on the rollout. Throws to the end zone in the short corner. is caught by far. If you're going to keep doing that. That'll work. And that does make it a 15-point game with a minute 18 to go in the third quarter. Smith Valley 42, Canyon 27. Back with more Smith Valley football on the Rangers Network. Okay, take a look here. You know, these pearly whites, uh, they're just not right. So you got this guy here, and, and, and boom, you move it over here. And don't forget this guy here. You shove it over here. After Ferris Orthodontics get a hold of these teeth, Bam! It's like it's like magic for your teeth. So the thing is, when teeth are lined up, you you know you you get a good smile. And it was Ferris Orthodontics that did that right there. Join us on the Hill Country Mile in Bernie's historic downtown for an old-fashioned holiday kickoff with all the trimmings at the 19th annual Dickens on Main celebration, Thanksgiving weekend, November 23rd and 24th. Bring friends and family to welcome the Christmas season with live music, theatrical performances, carriage rides, Santa visits, and more along snowy Main Street. Admission is free, and the memories last a lifetime. Visit DickensOnMain.com for all the details. 
Just when we thought Smith Valley was pulling away this game, the Cougars respond with a long, methodical drive, 12 plays, 75 yards, a hair under five minutes. And the drive ends on a fourth down a touchdown run by Nate Colbreth from three yards away. After two-point conversion, it is now a two-possession game. Cougars still within striking distance. 42-27 with a buck 18 left in the third quarter. Into a kickoff by Platt. It is short, and Wells to field it from the 20, and on the return, the freshman. Running left to the 35, Wells stays at his feet, breaks a Look tackle out. inside of midfield, and the freshman is down to the Canyon 42. Great run back. The freshman is proving to be a game changer. You think about the big players so far tonight for Smith Valley, certainly Levi Williams, especially his running ability in the second half. He's been great. Jacob Fortone has uh, been a nice surprise in the backfield that I would say Wells also belongs in that conversation tonight for Smith Valley. Well, he has had a couple of uh, jet sweeps that have been productive, including a score. Uh, I, I think he's just kind of, you mentioned that he had really hadn't found the groove, hadn't come into his own. Maybe tonight he's, he's coming into his own enough to say, hey, I'm here, use me. And for Tone, who's out there, along with Wells, on first half of the Canyon 41. Last two plays for the Rangers have been touchdown runs by Williams of 20 and 65 yards. This is a pass that is caught by Cole. His first catch this evening, the junior Chandler Cole. And dragged down to the Canyon 32. It's good for about nine yards. Make it eight, second down, eight to, uh, second down and two to go. Yeah, Garrett Cole, or, uh, Chandler Cole, you're right, six foot, 165 junior, had three catches coming in, so he's been utilized in each game. Garrett Cole, thinking of the Astros yeah. pitcher. No. Postseason is upon us just about, just basically, about. baseball. Yes, sir. Second down and two for the 32. Fortone of the carry on a sweep. Nice cutback move by Fortone. And down to the 27 yard line, gain six as we are under 30 seconds to go now in the third quarter. It's amazing when you start at their 41, how quickly you can get near the red zone. Canyon's defensive front, pretty good against the rush this year, only giving up about 116 yards per game. But the Rangers have chewed them up, especially in the second half. Part of that number, though, is people have thrown the ball on him, too. Lightning Brothels last week. From the 27, final play of the third quarter is a pass that's incomplete over the head of Kuykendall. Actually, two seconds to go now the third. <laughs> and Williams way off target on that throw. Just kind of shook his hand like, oops. I mean, he, he not only overthrew Kuykendall, but he, he threw it clear to the sideline. Yep. Yep. Kuykendall was inside the numbers. Kuykendall listed at 5'10", needed to be about 6'9", to make that catch. Or more. So this should be the final play of the third. From the Canyon 27 to second to 10. Here's the blitz and Williams takes off against it. Running inside the 20. Slips down to the 19 yard line for gain of eight. And that will end the third quarter. Rangers could be 12 minutes away for the first win of 2018. Your score the end of three. Smithson Valley 42, Canyon 27. Back with more Smith Valley football on the Rangers Network. Sunday, September 23rd. Don't miss the 911 2 night premiere event. It must be hard being a first responder. And if you missed a heart pounding second of 911 season one, we have to get her to the hospital. Watch it anytime on demand at Fox Now. The only way to survive the job is to find a way to cope with the ones you lose. But when you actually save someone, there is no better feeling in the world. I'm gonna get you out of here, I swear on my life. 911, the two night premiere event starts Sunday, September 23rd on Fox. Barnwood builders reclaim and restore 18th and 19th century log homes. We do things the old way, and everything we do, we do it with pride. All new Barnwood builders, Sunday night at 9 on DIY Network. Watch DIY GVTC Channel 126. 
Rangers Network, Brent Freeman alongside Tony Brubaker for this critical 26-6 a matchup in the Comal Bowl. At the end of three, Smith Valley on top 42 to 27. And a chance here to add to the lead inside the red zone, but face with third down and two at the Canyon 19 yard line. Talk about play calling all the time. Is this a pass? Is this a run? You give it to Fortune because he's uh, Fortone because he's been so successful. What do you do here? I say quarterback keeper by Williams. It is a throw, and it's caught by Kaikendall running left off a good block by Cole. And Kaikendall is spilled over at the nine-yard line. So Tony says for Tone, I say run Williams, and the Rangers naturally go to the air to Kaikendall for a first down. <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling because Nick Kaikendall has had some drops tonight, but that one was a two-handed catch right in his chest. And then he got a great block from Cole to get up the field and have a first and goal. A great look and play design that was executed perfectly. Now first and goal from the eight-yard line. Motion from Wells. He'll take the handoff with a sweep, but wow. the Cougars look like they're in the huddle before that play because they bring Wells down for a loss back to the nine-yard line, reading that all the way, second out and goal. You talked about it earlier. I mentioned earlier they're slanting and getting inside our linemen. That time they all three got in yeah. the backfield before Wells even had the ball. The Rangers scored 50 points total in their first three games of the season. 42 on the board right now, and nine yards away from perhaps 49. Mid have gone by the fourth, and nursing a 15-point lead. Williams on second and goal. We'll shovel it to Fortone, and the Cougars read that. Fortone slung back. Nearly a late hit there by Kyle Collier, but the whistles blow, no flag, and now third and goal for the 14. You could say after he's gone backwards for five yards and then you sling him down, that might be something you throw a flag at, yeah. especially right in front of the, the home team coaches. Uh, kind of an unusual play execution. No real hope for it to go anywhere it seemed like when it was thrown. Now we saw a really pretty 13-yard touchdown pass early in the game to end the second quarter. Williams to Gilliam. What do the Rangers dial up here? Now we see Mark Franco check into the game for the first time, and Smith Valley will spend a timeout. And that is the third and final of the half. That is the last one. With two minutes gone by in the fourth quarter, you would think here, though, that the timeout situation shouldn't hurt Smithson Valley a whole lot from here on out because even if they don't score a touchdown on this drive, a successful field goal by Reed would still make it a three-possession game. Exactly, yes. You get it to 18. you got to make the field goal, but Mason Reed's been pretty dependable. So Smithson Valley wouldn't be in a position where he would need the timeouts to stop the clock. So if you're Coach Hill, you can use them here to strategize what is third and goal now for the 14-yard line? And I think many of his, a couple of his timeouts were because they were behind the, the game clock. But yep. this is a teaching moment, I think, for sure, in a 15-point lead. Here's what we do now. Here's what we need. Here's a personnel decision that we haven't made all day. We're putting Franco in. Yep. The Canyon defense out there waiting. They're ready. Play clock has started. Yep. Coaches and Huddle still on the field. And now it breaks with 18 seconds to go on the play clock. We see Sill line up wide to the left and trips wide to the right for Williams at the 14-yard line. Motion from Wells. It is a play fake. Williams taking a shot at the end zone for Sill. He leaps and makes the catch. Touchdown, Smithson Valley. What a play by Ethan Sill. Unbelievable. A textbook back shoulder throw from Levi Williams. An even better catch made by Ethan Sill. All five, nine of them leapt up to make the catch, and the Rangers have a 48-27 lead. PAT by Reed is up. That kick is good. And now a 49-27 advantage for the Rangers. With 9.53 left, fourth quarter. Back with more Smithson Valley football on the Rangers Network. Let's go, hurry up, get to play in. Okay, here we go. Left retain. 
headgear. No popcorn, straight teeth. That's a good call. Headgear? Straight teeth? Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. call. What's going on here? I thought I left you in charge. It was a good call. It was a great call. It was a really good, good call. call. Okay, run the play. Sunday, September 23rd. Don't miss the 911 two night premiere event. Must be hard being a first responder. And if you missed a heart pounding second of 911 season one, we have to get it to the hospital. Watch it anytime on demand at Fox Now. The only way to survive the job is to find a way to cope with the ones you lose. But when you actually save someone, there is no better feeling in the world. I am gonna get you out of here, I swear on my life. 911, the two night premiere event starts Sunday, September 23rd on Fox. Welcome back to the Comal Bowl here at Ranger Stadium, Smithsville Valley on top, 49 to 27. Coming off a seven play, 41 yard drive in three minutes and 15 seconds. On third and goal for the 14, Williams hooking up with Ethan Sill as the ensuing kickoff by Reed bounces in the end zone for a touchback. And Tony, you and I, the broadcast start tonight, we're talking about the receiver position. There would yet to be that guy to establish himself as the playmaker in the receiving core. And we see Ethan Sill get his first snaps this year at wideout, and he has looked really good. And on a night that... Don't talk about it a lot, but Chris Rivera didn't play tonight for whatever reason. Uh, as the leading receiver, nobody else had more than three catches, and he comes in, Ethan Sill, and, and makes a lot of plays. Cougar football thrown 25 down by 22. With under 10 minutes to go in the game. Perez back to throw, facing a blitz, throws deep, and the pass is incomplete. The hurry provided by Holbeck for Smithson Valley. That'll bring up second down and 10. He threw it over the top of uh, Grebon, sophomore receiver, but by quite a bit. So and, and you kind of wonder if it was for him or the, the receiver to the outside hadn't broke in. I think with the pressure that Perez had yeah. no chance to step into the throw yeah. while it sailed over the target on second and 10. It is a run for Colbreth, and the Rangers stuff that at the line. In fact, Colbreth will lose a yard at the 24. Now the Cougars behind the eight ball here, third down and 11. Not many possessions left in this game for Canyon, down by 22 points. The defensive line is really playing well right now. Sam Garibay in there. On third and long, Perez to throw. On the rollout, throwing deep and high and incomplete for far again. Great pass rush there by the Rangers. Saw Colmansberger and on the pressure along with Trey Moore. And the Cougars, despite the, the predicament they're in, are going to punt the football back to Smithson Valley. Colmansberger got what we call in statistic versions a hurry. Yep. And he also got a pretty good hit on Perez that he'll take credit for. Colmansberger, second leading tackler a week ago at Clemens with 11 stops. Relatively quiet tonight. Out to punt. Oh. For the Cougars is Platt. That ball sails high in the air and does not travel very far. Marked out oh. at the 40-yard line. A 15-yard punt by Platt. Again rushed by Smithson Valley. And the Rangers a chance here to put the game away. And they certainly, hit with this kind of field possession, field position, should have a chance to, to take it in and take up a couple of minutes doing it. The Rangers have scored in all three second half possessions so far tonight. Second possession in a row starting inside Canyon territory. Only went 41 yards on the previous scoring drive. Another drive earlier tonight after a block punt. Rangers only had to go 25 yards for a score. And a new quarterback in for Smith Valley. Luke Gobbert has checked in to replace Levi Williams. Gobbert with a handoff running left to the 30 two-yard line. That's Brooks on the carry. For the Rangers, good for seven yards, second down and three. Brooks' first carry of the season. So Luke Gomber, the son of CISD Athletic Director, Liana Gomber, former longtime Smith Valley head volleyball coach, a junior quarterback, many believe, will take over the job this time next year. Just know that uh, 
as a sophomore on the JV team last year through 52% completions, 22 touchdowns, and almost 1,400 yards. They'll mark his second and four. Gobbert hands off to Fortone. Another great cutback by Fortone. And skirts up to the 22 for a gain of 10. You know, for a player who was not touching the football, you would think he wouldn't have the natural instincts of where to cut, where to go, once you get the ball and turn the corner. That has not been the case tonight for Fortone. He has ability, we just haven't seen it. And I think he just had his last carry of the night. See, Wyatt Doss check into the game at receiver and at running back now for the Rangers is Hunter LaCour, a junior. And Gobbert on the throw. It is high but incomplete for Doss. Only the second pass attempted on the year for Gobbert. Second and 10 with 7.57 to go, and the Rangers on top by 22-point cushion. Trouble with the snap, turned and just fired it a little bit high. The unfortunate part is it stops the clock. Good part is it's second down and 10, and we've got another play to play for. Not that the Rangers wanted to start one and three, obviously, but if you're going to go one and three in your first four games, why not have the one be before the bye week? Right. On second and 10, Gobbert hands off to Brooks, slicing back to his left, and he is drilled at the 21. No gain. We'll bring up third down, 10 to go, but that time a running play will keep the clock moving and ticking closer to 7.30 to go in the game. Rangers getting a chance to see some of the guys they haven't seen much of this year and see how they perform under the That's lights. Right. With so many, with all the games being fourth quarter games, the Rangers have not had the liberty of bringing right. in the third or fourth teamers. Let's see what Gobber can dial up here on third down and ten. A passing down for the junior quarterback. Gobbert on the throw. It is complete to Kuykendall, but hit right away by McKay. A loss of yards, and now a flag flies far from the far sideline. From the Canyon sideline past the right hash, <laughs> that flag traveled about 30 yards in the air. And it was late, too and far away from the play. Well, I think Canyon's asking for a late block or something that happened away from the ball. Personal foul. It's against Canyon. A face mask against the Cougars. And this possession will continue for Gobbert in the offense. Is that, okay, are we to, to think that was on, that was away from the ball? Because the ball uh -huh. was caught clear over here. So it was a lineman, perhaps. Must have been. Now Jacob Cox checks into the game at tight end. The backup behind Howell. Seven-minute mark, fourth quarter. Ranger football. And it's Mr. Valley on its way to his, to its first win of 2018. First down at the 10. They can get a first down if they're at the two-inch mark. Yep. Play clock winding down for Gobbert with no timeouts to use. Gobbert hands off the core, and he is stacked up. Another flag flies, though, behind the play, the 15. As it stands right now, a loss of five yards there for the core, and we'll check the penalty marker. Their defensive line is getting off on the ball really quick. That looked like a face mask to me on the tackle. And Tony, you had it right on the money there. Another face mask against Canyon. So it'll be first down at the, what, seven and a half? The Cougars only averaging 45 penalty yards per game. But that's back to back 15 yarders there against the Cougars. But with half the distance, yes, the ball marked inside the 10 at the seven yard line. So Smithson Valley not in the position all year long to put an opponent away, uh, playing from behind the first three games of the year. Tonight, a great job of putting the Cougars away. On first down, it is a run to the left and track down to the five. Is the core on the carry. Second down and goal from there as we, hit, as we have now hit the halfway mark of the fourth quarter. 
A better looking play blocking wise that time. Only got about a yard on it, but still he had a chance to get to the corner. Sometimes, Tony, again, going back to the previous point, you know, young football teams that don't play with the lead very much don't know how to close out an opponent. Yeah. But the Rangers tonight, you know, that lead did get small. At one point went from a 21-6 game to 21-19, but found a way to put the Cougars out of it in the second half. Play clock runs out as we had some more subs in again, this time subs on the offensive line. And again, no timeouts for the Rangers to use to prevent the penalty. So five yards marked off, second and goal now from the 12. Well, from the 11-yard line. And on second down, Gobbert trying to lead a scoring drive. Hands off to LaCour, bounces it to the outside off a block from Brooks and has no room to go. And the Cougars send him out of bounds at about the 14. They'll lose some yards there, third and goal now. Just the inexperience of a running back that time. He had a lane to cut back and didn't choose it. Went outside the defender who had pushed up field. You only know how to learn it if you do it. Looking around the district this week again, East Central, the winner last night over to Broadfels, 23-12. Happening right now in San Marcos, the Rattlers hosting Judson. And a big game in shirts. It is a Clemens against Steele, their Linoff Stadium. Judson winning handily at San Marcos, by the way. Judson won handily last week over Steele, 58 to 21. Third and goal for the 15. Gobbert to throw. Far side for Rattleball on the catch. Slips a tackle inside the 10 and forced out of the four yard line. Really thought Rattleball again was a tackle away from scoring. And the Rangers, leading by 22, are going to send out some backups on offense. I don't think it's the kicking team coming out. It's not. Or is it the backup kicker? It is. <laughs> And I believe this is LaCour. It's not Reed out there. Or no, not LaCour. That's Joaquin Rodriguez. The yes. junior knocks it through. And the Rangers have a 52-27 lead with 5.22 to go in the fourth quarter. Back with more Smith Valley football on the Rangers Network. Oh, look at that. It's starting to feel like a mega pick. I'm loving this place already. You're digging, you're going through the layers. This is American history, and it's for sale. I'll take it. Watch History Channel, GBTC, Channel 557. We've got spirit. Yeah, we do. Fill up your tank and support the Rangers, too. When you get gas, look for the Rangers Spirit Pump because Pit Stop and Fishers are donating a percentage of sales from that pump to the Smithson Valley Athletic Booster to support our student athletes. Get gas here and fill up the Booster Club's bank. Here's where you can find your spirit pumps. When you see it, pull up and fill up, Rangers. Just a minute to go in the first half. The Rangers held a 21-19 lead. Since then, all Smith Valley outscoring the Cougars since that point, 31-8. Into a kickoff, deep again for the Rangers, and again out of the back of the end zone. That kickoff by Rodriguez as well. Coming off the Rodriguez field goal, 21 yards away. That ended an eight-play, 34-yard drive for Smith Valley. Three minutes, 53 seconds off the fourth quarter clock. And the Rangers now on top, 52-27 with 5.22 to go. Should be lots of backups on the field for the Rangers. This one again seemed to be in doubt for a while as Canyon was not going away. What did it take, Tony, for the Rangers to put this one in the win column? Well, I think what we saw was the touchdown at the end of the first half and then the touchdown at the start of the second half finally let the Rangers breathe with two good offensive possessions. 
Timeout called by Canyon for the Cougars. That is their second of the half. They have one remaining. Timeout called by first year head coach Joe Lepsis trying to turn around this program, which went two and eight a year ago, four straight losing seasons for Canyon. And they have suffered seven losing campaigns over the last decade. The last playoff appearance came in 2013. They have not won a playoff game. 13 years last doing so back in 2005 but this is a much improved Canyon football team from what we've seen in previous years that said though Tony still in this district hard time drawing up scenario which Canyon finishes with a winning record they have a lot of limitations talent wise but I play I think they play so stinking hard and have such a great desire they're just different than the last couple of teams on first down Perez throwing for oh. The receiver, Luke Rebon, forced out of the 30-yard line for a gain of five. His second catch this year. Second down, five to go as we approach five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And the Rangers on top by 25 points. On second down, Perez on the rollout. Pump fake, track down and sacks. Back at the 25. And for the Rangers coming in to make the play was Logan Jennings. And credit Joy Lake, a senior backup cornerback who was on far that time and jumped in front of him as Perez was acting like he was going to throw, and Perez ate it and got sacked. The loss of four, third down and nine to go. Perez back to throw again, on the rollout again, throwing to his right, caught by far, and he is sent out at the Rangers' sideline. On the tackle was Joey Lake. And enough for a first down there for Canyon. I'm excited to see in two weeks this explosive Cougar offense take on that Clemens defense we saw a week ago. Yeah. Good job by far that time who realized what Lake was trying to do. Just went down and stopped and turned around and Perez delivered it to him. I'm really curious, curious what Max Didomenenko is doing tonight yeah. against Steele. Surprise quarterback for Clemens a week ago. On first down, Perez throwing deep down the far side. He's got far again. Big game for Calvin Farr. And brought down to the 32-yard line. 32-yard pickup there for Farr, who had a 71-yard catch earlier in the game. First down, Canyon. Farr is uh, one of those really good Steve Largent possession type receivers. Not big, 5'9", 170, but elusive. Thought you might say something about Steve Largent since he was a while ago. Well, that's the <laughs> old, old school Seattle Seahawks. First out with the 32, Cole Breath on the carry, dragged, dragged down by Eggleston at the 29. That's good for three. Now, I didn't see Largent play. I'll admit that, but I know of him, Tony, so that's not too old of a reference for me. I'll give you a lot of credit there but you didn't go the Wes Welker route. Wes Welker would be today's recent, more recent one. Steve Largent, yeah. yeah. Down to the 26 yard line goes Cole Breath on that second down carry to bring up third down and five to go. And I'm sure there are a lot more that we don't readily think of because they're not usually the money makers. Well, last night in the NFL game, Rams Vikings, the big game for Cooper Cup. Yeah, how about Jared Goff? Five touchdown passes last night for Los Angeles. Still weird, by the way, calling them the L.A. Rams. Yes. Third out of five from the 26. Even though that's what they used to be. That's, that's right. It is a run for cold breath again. Slam down to the 25. So maybe a yard, that's it. We'll bring it fourth down. What's more bizarre for me to say, Tony, is the L.A. Chargers. Yeah, that's awful. Keeping myself from saying San Diego is challenging. The Chargers shouldn't be in L.A. L.A. didn't need the Chargers. I, one could argue they didn't need the Rams either. Right. Fourth down and three, make it two for the 24. Perez with the give to Cole Breath, looking for first down yardage, and the seniors got it at the 20-yard line. We'll move the sticks with 2.45 to go in a 25-point game. And at 2.45 to go, let's make the point that these are still largely their offensive starters on the field running the ball against our third team. I go back to the point, point we made earlier, Tony. I don't think there's much depth on this Canyon football team. But good starters. Perez on first down, throws complete for far. 
And the 18 make it the 17 yard line for three. Weapons on this Canyon offense, a good offensive line. Veteran quarterback in Perez, but the defense just cannot get enough stops this year to put the Cougars in position to win 26 6A games. I can't argue with you there. Empty backfield for Perez here in second down and seven. The senior is back to throw. As Garcia turning up field, make it far. Another catch and upended by Lake at the eight-yard line. Another first down there for Canyon. And now goal to go inside the 10. It doesn't matter which side of the field far is on. Perez is going to roll that way and try to get it to him. Now he's back on the left side of the field. And Garcia lines up wide to the right. Big 67-yard touchdown catch back of the first half. On first down, Eggleston on the corner blitz. Shot right through to drill Colbreth, who was a bit slow to get up at the eight yard line. And remember, Canyon already without Seth Haney for likely the remainder of the year. And Colbreth will limp his way towards the Canyon sideline. That is not a good sign for the Cougars. Eggleston was a great play from his weak side linebacker spot there. Just He got there before the handoff was almost and just kind of spun him down. It didn't look like it was anything that could hurt him, but perhaps he got a, caught, a foot caught underneath. This is where the lack of depth really hurts you because the game has been decided. Right. And you have, you're have you risking first string players getting hurt out there. On second and goal, Perez throwing in zone and the catch is made. Far another touchdown for the Cougars. What a night he's had. Canyon now with a 19 with a buck 48 to go. Unbelievable. Now a 52-33 Ranger lead. The 33 points given up by the Rangers. A new season high. Against Mr. Valley's defense, looking good all year long. The previous high given up was 24 in the opener against Midland Lee. Platt for the PAT. Made one earlier tonight, will not make a second. A helmet comes off of one of the Cougars as the ball is picked up by the Rangers. And with a minute 48 left, it remains a 52-33 Smith and Valley lead. No need to talk about that ugly thing no. that just happened there. 52-33. A lack of a kicking game for the Cougars. Also something that's going to make life difficult in 26-6A. Yeah, it, it's, you know, we say this all the time at the 6A level, how do you not have someone who can kick an extra point? But, you know, a first-year head coach, kind of a, a bad situation. That's why he's a first-year head coach. Uh -huh. No one apparently knows how to kick the ball through the uprights because they've been trying. Two different guys have each made a couple. Yep. That one looked as bad as I've seen a kick try in a while. So Smithson Valley, again, is a minute 48 away from his first win of the year. A bye week next week, the week after that. On the road at East Central, Coach Hill's alma mater <laughs> against the Hornets. This will be a career win, by the way, number 247 for Coach Hill at Smithson Valley. That's a few. And this is 26th year on the Rangers' sidelines. And this 0-3 start, by the way, uncharted waters for Coach Hill during that time. Last 0-3 start, 1988. Squib kick there for the Cougars. Picked up at the 40-yard line by Gobbert. <laughs> don't see too many quarterbacks out there on return yeah. units. The all-hands team. So your backup quarterback has good hands, so he's the one that's circled. He kind of Someone let it by, and he circled around and picked it up. This will drop the Cougars to two and three. After the bye, they'll host Clemens. We saw them last week. That's no easy game for Canyon. After that, they'll take on East Central and then Tony back-to-back -back games against Judson and Steele before ending the season against San Marcos. So the Cougars are really tough schedule from here on out. 
anyone that has uh, those teams has a really yep. tough schedule, and a lot of them still do. Gobbert with the handoff, and the core is driven back by Perez for a loss back to the 38. Loss of two. And the shot from Worley. You mentioned the first team offense out there for Canyon on its last drive. You look at the defense, I see all first teamers still out there for the Cougars. Most of them, yes. Canyon not showing an effort to stop the clock, and the Rangers will take their time. On second to 12. Gobbert gives to the core again, or actually a new running back in there for the Rangers. And he is taken down to the 42-yard line on the carry there. was Braxton Bounds, a, a, a junior tailback. Haven't called his name all year long. And now the clock stops. The Cougars do spend their third and final timeout. Coaching moment, I think, for... Uh Canyon for their kids to see the scenario and don't know that he anybody believes he has a 19 point play in his pocket but you know use a timeout see what you can do see what you can coach see what you can talk about with them about what you would do if it was a um, a six point game at this point and, and you needed possession this is your last bit of live action for a couple of weeks as well yeah, yeah. this win will extend the Rangers winning streak over the Cougars to 16 in a row. Again, the last win of the series for Canyon 23 years ago back on back in 1995. Do you know who the Cougars coach was that year? In 95? Brad Wright? May have been. I think you're probably pretty close. I can tell you who it was for Smithson Valley. <laughs> Go back a little farther than that, too. Only a couple of more years to 93. On third and long, it is a run again for Bounds, trying to stay in bounds and drag down near the sideline. And they will rule that he did stay in. Clock continues to tick. There is about a nine second difference right now between the play clock and the game clock. So after the punt, the Cougars might have time for one more play. I mentioned the rest of the schedule for Canyon for Smithson Valley after the East Central game in two weeks. The next home game the week after against the Judson Rockets October the 19th. Number one team in the city of San Antonio and one of the top five teams in the state, no doubt. And then they, too, play Judson and Steele in back-to-back -back weeks. They'll travel to Linoff Stadium again the week yeah. after to take on the Steele Knights. Final home game of the year comes in week 10 against San Marcos. Final game of the regular season could be for a playoff spot on the road against New Braunfels. A unicorn team, a good win last week, but did not look very good last night. And here's a punt by Brooks, a line drive rugby style. And the ball picked up on the run by the Canyon returner McKay. And McKay dragged down inside of midfield, and that will do it. The Rangers in the win column for the first time in 2018. As Smith Valley evens his 26-6A record to 1-1. One one. Final score from Ranger Stadium in the Comal Bowl. Smith Valley 52, Canyon 33. Back with more Smith Valley football on the Rangers Network. Chicken Express is the place for legendary chicken tenders, the freshest sides, and the best sweet tea in Texas, Chicken E Sweet Tea. Let's give a big thank you to the Brown family for supporting all the high schools in the area for over a decade. Dine in, drive up, or drive through. We'll see you at Chicken Express. At Frost, we have the top rated app in the banking category, yet it's the half star that's missing that has our attention. So we're always pushing, tweaking, and updating. Because even a little half star will keep us up at night. Welcome to Rangers Wrap Up on the Rangers Network. Smith Valley, a win tonight over Canyon, 52 to 33. Joining us now is senior quarterback Levi Williams. 
Three touchdown runs for the Rangers tonight. Two of them coming up back-to-back -back plays. One of them a 20-yarder, the other one from 65 yards out. Levi, let's start there. The big touchdown runs for you. What, what do you recall seeing on those plays? Uh, we did a draw play, and the O-line executed perfectly. We uh, spread out. We were spreading them out with a little pass fake on the outside, and the backers went out, and it was just green grass. So I just took off running. The offense had a tough time getting into a rhythm the first three games of the season. Why was tonight different, scoring 52 points? I think we just came in to practice with a different attitude. I think that uh, we had our best practices that we've ever had this season, and uh, we just executed. Now, I, I relayed the three touchdown runs you had. You also threw two touchdown passes, one of them towards the end of the first half to Jeremiah Gilliam, the other one to Ethan Sill, who hadn't played receiver up until this game tonight. Take us back to the touchdown uh, pass to Sill in particular on what was third and goal from the 14. Uh, it was just one-on-one, -on -one and he just had to make a play, and I just put the ball up there so we could make a play, and he did it. So. I'm sure the team would like the record to be better than it is right now, one and three, but the one comes going into the bye week before you play East Central. In terms of momentum, what, is this, what does this win do for you going into the bye? We're just going to take this momentum and drive it straight through the bye week. We're going to get better every single day, and we're going to practice harder than we ever have to uh, our next game. All right, Levi, congrats on the win, and we'll see you at East Central in two weeks. All right, thank you. Again, Smith Valley senior quarterback Levi Williams joining us here in the Rangers wrap-up. Up next, we'll visit with Smith Valley head coach Larry Hill here in the Rangers Network. Chicken Express is the place for legendary chicken tenders, the freshest sides, and the best sweet tea in Texas, Chicken E Sweet Tea. Let's give a big thank you to the Brown family for supporting all the high schools in the area for over a decade. Dine in, drive up, or drive through. We'll see you at Chicken Express. Back on Rangers wrap-up, Smith Valley win tonight over Canyon in 26-6A action, 52-33. Now joined by Rangers head coach Larry Hill. Coach, you brought this up during the telecast earlier tonight that getting out to the lead early, get your first lead of the season, was able to give you a chance to dictate tempo, pace of the game. Just, just how important was that early on in the game? Well, I think it's twofold. You know, it gives us confidence. You, like you said, we've had some three tough games that have gone down to the last possession, but we're swimming upstream most of those games, you know, and uh, uh, to put them on the defensive a little bit, to gain some confidence for ourselves and then make them uh, uh, have to do a little comeback. So it was important, although we never pulled away a whole lot until, you know, in the third and fourth quarter. Now we visited earlier with your quarterback, Levi Williams, arguably his best game this season, three touchdown runs, two touchdown passes. How much of a rhythm did he, did he appear to be in this evening? Well, I thought, you know, he was outstanding. Uh, maybe the difference in the ball game. Obviously, we did some things well in, in a lot of areas. But uh, I think the best thing that he did and our offense in general did, I thought we played extremely well on first down, whether he was making a throw on first down or us running the football or maybe him running on first down. Kept us in those second and shorts, third and shorts, a whole lot, you know, more manageable. And then when we had to have some things, I thought he really stepped up. A lot of third down conversions, you know, dropped the fade ball in the corner of the end zone about as pretty as a picture. And then, you know, busted the quarterback draw for 60 or 70, you know, when, and, and really I felt like that was the turning point of the game. A few wrinkles in terms of personnel for you this evening. We saw a lot of Jacob Fortone for you in the backfield, which we hadn't all year long. Ethan Sill plays wide receiver. We spoke with Levi about that. How big were their contributions? Well, I thought Jacob was outstanding. He was probably the unsung hero of the night. He's so versatile. He can play our blocking back. He can play our extra halfback. He can play our running back. And through some injuries and some other things that we did tonight, he did all of those things and did them extremely well. Very tough runner, very elusive, very difficult to bring down. Uh, still did his job blocking the, you know, so I thought, I thought he was a, a big key in the game and I want to throw kudos to him. Every week I ask you for your keys to the game, and one of the emphasis you always put on is special teams. you got to win the kicking game tonight. Arguably you did that. How big did special teams come through for you this evening? Well, there are several plays that stick out. Of course, the block punt that gave us a short field. Obviously, Trey Witcher got a piece of that. We had a couple of big kickoff returns and then recovered their squib uh, kicks. And then our kickoff coverage, of course, we didn't have to cover much. Mason keeps kicking the ball out of the end zone. so. They're, they never get a chance to return it. They've got a long field because of the, the strength and the, of his leg and his ability. And, uh, you know, and I uh, thought we had a, a pretty, pretty good return or two. So field position matters, and kicking game creates field position really like no other. That and lack of turnovers. You don't turn the ball over and give them the short field, 
okay, we'll punt. Well, what do you reel off? About a 60, 70 yard punt yep. and pinned them deep. So it might have been one of the big keys of the game as well. How significant is it to take a win into the bye week? Well, it is It, it is important. You know, momentum is such a, a fickle thing. And, you know, if you really think about it, if, uh, if we had won three in a row, mm -hmm. including the district opener last week, but lost tonight, we would still be one and one in district, just like we are right now. Mm -hmm. But we have two weeks to gnaw on it. And, uh, but really, we would be no further ahead or behind than we are right now. We've had disappointing finishes, go down to the last possession, can't close the deal, but then we win tonight. Well, we're still one and one, which is the exact scenario that I just described. So of the two, that's better. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got a long way to go. It is 26-6A. Uh, but like I told our players, you win tonight, four teams lose. Mm -hmm. You win a game up on four teams. That's the way it's going to be for the next five weeks. And so, heck with last week, to heck with two weeks from now, win tonight, and that's what we did. All right, Coach, with the alma mater is next. We'll see you in two weeks at East Central. Okay, Brant, thank you. And for more on Smith Valley football, be sure to tune in later this week for Inside Rangers Football as we talk with Coach Hill about the win over the Cougars and look ahead to the, win to the game coming up against East Central. For Smith Valley Head Coach Larry Hill, I'm Brian Freeman. This has been the Rangers Wrap-Up on RangersNetwork.com. They say it's cooked to perfection when he decides it is. They say the word flavor was named after him. They say you can beat Bobby Flay. What do they know? Beat Bobby Flay, Thursday night at 10 on Food Network. Watch Food Network, GVTC, channel 563. At Frost, we have the top-rated app in the banking category. Yet, it's the half-star that's missing that has our attention. So we're always pushing, tweaking, and updating. Because even a little half-star will keep us up at night. Welcome back to Ranger Stadium. Back to wrap things up on the Rangers Network. Smith Valley picks up his first win of 2018. A final score of 52-33 over the Canyon Cougars. Back inside the broadcast booth. Brain Freeman with Tony Brubaker. And Tony, Smithson Valley was looking for that breakthrough game offensively tonight, and boy, did they get it in a big way. Yeah, and we we talked about it, especially in the second half, a couple of new playmakers came alive. And, and that's what's, I think, very favorable for the future for this program is they found a couple of guys who could make the offense work better. Something else, too, Tony, we pointed this out when the Rangers took that early 7-0 lead, that your playbook, has a lot more pages in it when you play with the lead. Smithson Valley had not led all year long in the first three games of the season. They were able to dictate the tempo and the pace of this game by simply getting out to the early lead. That was big. Well, having the, having not had the lead all year, I think it, it's a favorable thing that you could talk about that it's kind of fun that they held the lead the whole game and never gave it up. Now, defensively, again, Smithson Valley's strength of the first three games was that side of the football Tonight, there were some plays made by the defense, sure, but giving up the big play against Canyon has to be a little bit concerning going into the bye week. Yeah, how, how do we better cover a Callan Farr when I think in a lot of his catches we were all over him? Mm -hmm. How do you contain a, a Colbreth, one of the better running backs in the district, I think? You know, I, it just, I don't know if we, if we were just not as sharp defensively and maybe because we had a lead, maybe they weren't playing with the same edge. Well, Tony, feels good to get a win, it and does. we'll see you in two weeks. Yes, sir. Next up with the Rangers, it'll be the East Central Hornets. That game is scheduled for October the 13th on the road at East Central. We'll have live coverage of the game available for you right here on the Rangers Network. For Tony Brubaker and our entire Rangers Network crew, I'm Brian Freeman saying good night from Ranger Stadium. <laughs>